Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Hello, Dustin. Hi. Hello, Logan. Oh. I'll be with you in a minute. Okay. Uh, Mark, he showed uh, this clip thing of all of Brett uh, flipping. <laughs> he rose. No, Is that I'm crazy? That's crazy. <laughs> As usual, I'm running a little late here. So that's okay. <coughs> mm -hmm. 
that's crazy. <laughs> Brett. Um, Logan, can you do me a... Well, wait a minute. I got to get the right ch chats thing here. Okay. I got a live broadcast going, but I advertise with a different... Uh, I'm probably the best way to probably be just delete that one. Want me to uh, send these to uh, Aiden in the, the link? Um, I sent them. Uh, eight. I'm going to uh, have you pin. I want you to pin that. Well, wait, let me get to the chat. Yeah, you can send one to Aiden. That's fine. Okay. Want me to send one to Cindy? I'm waiting for this thing to go off by itself. Who just came in? Hello. 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 Hey, Steve. I got a question for you. I just okay. went live, obviously, right? But of course, it's going to uh -huh. be very different. You know what I advertised on. How do I get to the one I advertised on, or do I have to wait till it's exactly eight o'clock for that to say? Do you know my dilemma here? Yes, I am the lowly techless man here. Techless priest. Are you asking that one should just it should start? Right. It should just tie in okay. with this one. You think it'll tie together? Okay. All right, it's eight o'clock. That's what I had it for. I wonder if I should click on it. Hey that. Logan, could you take this invite, uh, the yeah. Zoom invite, and send it to Rosie? Okay. I sent, I sent one. Oh, uh, you did? Yeah. I need Logan so, as soon okay. as I find out. Well, not yet, Logan. I got to find out what room we're actually in. Okay. Because of this double one waiting premieres January. On 20th. Zoom, did you have an option? I don't know. Uh, you even, uh, yeah, you put a nice little thing in there, too. Let me see what the link is in the share here. Oh, it's totally different, I bet you. What would I do in a case like this? You have any idea, dude? <laughs> do I shut down and uh, re-click on the uh, other one? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I would do that. You would shut it all down? Okay. Well, right. I mean, it's where is the thinking. other one? Well, I just sent out all these links. Um, well, I me... mean, when they s no, don't don't shut it down. Just leave it open. Okay. They're gonna know that there's a live tonight, anyways, and they're gonna see you live streaming. Okay. Well, I'm just gonna shut this one down. Well, I'd never start it up. Wait, so. no, don't do it. Who is this? No, don't shut it down, Pastor. Why would you shut it down? I'm not shutting it down. I was saying I'm just going to click off the one that advertised in Jesus, the Jesus Forum 2.0. That's all. I'm in that right now. I was looking at the link. That's all. Hi, Aiden. Oh, I see. I would have left him open. Shut up, Logan. You're not allowed to speak. All right, Logan. <laughs> hey, Logan, go ahead and uh, in the, the one that's marked uh, live. Yeah. Go ahead and paste that uh, link. Say hi first so I can make you a moderator so um, you can post it. Make sure you um, make Brett a moderator too so that he can sabotage your channel. <laughs> I was uh, stupider than just making him a moderator. I made him a manager on my YouTube channel. Yeah. Wait, wait, you before, had, yeah. wait before you all start here. I have a <laughs> message from Brett Keen for you all. <laughs> Oh, I'm serious. Okay. Really? Right, right from the prophet himself. This is from uh, just 10 minutes ago. Ooh, I'll be listening really? to the gossip and rumors. It sounds like a threat to me, but anyway. Well, gossip and rumors are what you trade in. Brett, you're I'll a be... merchant. Brett, you are a merchant of gossip and rumors, okay? And you're not even a good one. So if you want to watch this and watch and learn, Brett, that's all that I have to say as far and... as that's concerned. And when I you change hi. the descriptions in somebody's YouTube channel videos to I'm an eager bottom, is it really gossip? I mean, he made the conscious no, decision to do that for all of YouTube to see. It's just outright slander at that point. Okay, That's all Logan, that it is. you're a moderator now. You can uh, 
paste that. And if you know how to pin it, go ahead. If you don't, I'll pin it. I don't know how to pin it. Oh, I yeah. See. Um, Rosie, where's your face? Just beware, Chuck, that uh, there's like a good coin flip of a chance of Brett trying to flag this video down because we say things that he disagrees with. So just to make sure That's fine. that he doesn't even have an excuse to flag it down. We don't have to play any of his content or anything like that oh, because darn. you know you damned if you do. I, I downloaded you that video too. I was just gonna. We'll have. I all mean, of you, us. you can. You totally can actually because it doesn't break YouTube guidelines or terms of service. Because when we comment over the video and provide our own commentary, can critique and criticism, it um, it allows us to supplant fair use because it's our own intellectual property at that point. Or actually, it's your intellectual property specifically, Chuck, because it's on your channel. But that doesn't matter to Brett. Brett doesn't actually care about the real terms of service. He cares about uh, the Brett Keen terms of service, which well, is make sure that you don't say anything mean about me or I'll flag your channel into oblivion yeah he'll try to get me a strike you know while they're investigating <coughs> oh but uh Lo i just wanted to say to steven real quick logan before yeah. you get your two cents in i i'm not saying this in any way i'm actually trying to say this to provide you a mode of comfort in these dark and troubling times but what happened with you and brett is not unique the same thing happened to me and it was i missed one show of his i missed one live show that he wanted me to be be on with him i was eating some dinner and i told him in the comments of the video that i was just eating and that i'd be on right away that wasn't good enough for brett though so he decided he was gonna shut that down and he was gonna start drama with mark stoney and he was gonna say that i was a piece of garbage because i dared to go into mark stoney's room and try to defend some of the points that he was making against brett but also not d defend other ones that were legitimate like i dared to actually have a balanced hey, opinion here. about what mark was saying what was that? Sorry. Let me tell you. Let me tell you something interesting, Aiden. I've spent most of my life involved in politics, like as far as fundraising for the Republican National Convention. And even my dad ran for Congress back in like 2006. And I have still not ever seen as many politics played um, in in Washington that I've seen played on on YouTube. There's so much politics involved with YouTube. See, but like if if Brett Keen's a politician, then Brett Keen is Joe the plumber <laughs> because he can't even bother to keep up an appearance for long enough for anybody to really actually buy into what he's saying. Because what happened with you? I, I mean, I, I say this once again in the nicest way possible, but if he had continued to be nice to you, he would have continued to string you along for a lot longer than what he did. But he was so incompetent. That the second that you did something that dared to annoy him or dare catch his ire, he decided he was going to resort to completely trying to destroy your channel and trying to tear everything down by slandering your name and making you look like a piece of garbage. Is this Aiden talking? Uh, no, this is not Aiden. Oh, uh, this one is and a, only. This is an anonymous source. Nope. Uh, who's talking? Is a piece of garbage. And Stop I it! <laughs> Rosie, I can neither confirm I'm trying or deny to associate. No, who is that? I'm just trying to because wait, I wait. haven't actually can, can, met. Can, can everyone? Sure. Can everyone please be quiet? Just one second, honest. Maybe three. Tops three. Fine. Welcome, Rose. Rosie, welcome to the channel. Welcome. Rosie yes. is a co-host as well, which I got to make her. Hello, hello, All Rosie. Right, I'll show welcome. You. I'll shut up. Now. Are you Aiden? Uh, I can tell you that this is this is definitely not Aiden. All right. If, if anybody that's out there, it's definitely not Aiden. Who yeah, is make sure it? You, make sure Who you use your voice de scrambler technology. Are you Brian? Is this I'm Brian? Not, no, it's Aiden. It's Aiden. I'm just messing with you. I'm okay. Just messing with you. Okay, because I haven't it's actually met you yet. Aiden, no. I've heard about you. I've heard about you, but I haven't. And You've I figured by the me. way you were know. talking. Yeah, my reputation. Well, you know, we're concerned me. about your soul. We're, we're concerned about your uh, your eternal state. So, oh, there's no I've, soul I've, left I've... to save. Don't worry, there's no soul. Left. Oh, Lord, <laughs> have mercy! Stop uh, it. Uh, he's an Eastern Orthodox you know. by heart, Rosie. Trust me, he's right on the edge. I thought he's atheist. Uh, Rosie is. He said he's right on the edge with her motherly side, and if she worries about <clears throat> you, she will come hard for you. So just give in. 
Oh, don't say that with somebody as perverted as Brett watching. He can easily twist those words. So just be careful with what you say there. All right. Is all that I have to say. No, that's you no. Know what? <laughs> Stop I, when I was making a thumbnail, I was making a new thumbnail uh, for the Jesus forum. And I asked uh, Pastor Chuck, I said, Pastor Chuck, I need you to send me a full body pic. And I was going to cut out the background and use <laughs> it on the thumbnail. And then I stopped and thought about it. I was like, you know what? If anyone had been listening and heard me ask this priest for a full body pic. Make, make sure that you're I shirtless could. in the picture too, Chuck. Make sure you're shirtless. <laughs> Just kind of oh. fluff your hair to the side, Pastor. Whoa. Yeah, well, I have, I have been hiding a secret from all you guys for all these years. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, in my Chuck younger confession years, in I, I, did, I, I did pose for Playgirl. Whoa. <laughs> Oh, you know that you know there's yeah. gonna be an out of con there's gonna be an out of context clip of that on Brett's channel within 24 hours. Trust me, there's gonna you know be what? That it was short, ma- it, it, that it was many go famous. It was many years before I was ordained. Ah, well, you know what? Are you kidding? Of course, I'm Jack? kidding. Really. <laughs> oh, come on, Chuck. I mean, well, you know. Amazing. It's totally I mean, more rosy. I mean, shoot, Chuck I've is, done some shameful things. Chuck is a sex icon. I mean, come on. Let's be <laughs> I'll, t- I'll tell you what, Rosie. Like I told you earlier, in my younger years, I, I was a chick magnet. I know it's hard to believe to look at me now, but but are you as much of a chick magnet as Ken Tobin? I mean, how many wives? Oh no, I, I, I don't compare. <laughs> come on, nobody, nobody could get more. Have it's mercy, Mark Stoney. And Ken Hovind, they're in a competition to see who could get the most ladies. At least according Is to Mark uh, Stoney, a ladies. I shouldn't a ladies do that, man? but I'm going to make. He's not. One he's a ladies' up. man in that uh, he gets all the ladies. I've only had one meal today. He's too bashful. Oh, though, okay, to yeah. Actually. He's too bashful <laughs> to dip off. himself into that, though. He's too shy. No, I'm just oh. kidding. <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, uh, no, Chuck. Oh, you going by oh. Rosie? You're a co-host, and Steven. <laughs> Okay, Aiden. what does that mean? Like, you should be like, <laughs> me, of every episode. You're supposed to do the Pledge of Allegiance for everybody. Uh, we go in a circle, but we start with the female host. Um, you should make me manage. I pledge allegiance oh. to the flag. <laughs> no. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag. How does that one go, Steve? I pledge, sure you I know. pledge my life to How are you going to start... I'll, I'll, oh, I'll lay like my life on the line in the battle. Yeah, that's right. We like we do the whole ritual. We do like a little cut in each other's hands, and then we like shake hands. You do like the blood bond thing. It's pretty cool. Oh, I'm not doing that. No, no. You, no. The, now there, you're getting weird. Then you like dap each other's fists at the end. And you just like up, down, boom, boom. There are <laughs> many priests out there, but Chuck is our priest. It's true. That's hey, right. What do you mean? What do you mean that that's weird? You guys eat the you guys eat the body and drink the blood of Christ every time that you go to church. All right. If you want to talk about weirdness, that's, that's just, it's not literal. That's just orthodox. It is and literal. Uh, it is Pro- literal. No Protestants. I am Protestants not. Don't believe that. Yeah, I'm not. I'm a Protestant. Why would, why would my understanding? Look, then? I let he didn't. The people did. And well, he said um, it, didn't he? Yeah, but the but. My interpretation, and I would presume I would get most people to agree, is when first you need the cross, that's the blood and the flesh, that's the the unleavened bread. Um, and when you when you are reading the scripture, especially the the gospel, you are eating his body because you are there and you are he is discipling you as you are reading the scriptures sure so if just you like analogy, wait 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 hold on hold on i'm gonna finish just like the analogy let's use your word there just like the analogy where he who looks at a woman with lust in his eyes has already committed adultery with her in his heart the same principle applies to when you are reading scriptures to understand your messiah god in the flesh has come to illustrate to us how we should live. So in following him, we take on his flesh. Following him, who his sacrifice, we, we are saved by grace through faith, and it is not of our own doing so that no man may boast. 
And that is how we are saved, but we still stumble and fall. That's why we need the blood. So, and it, it's a spiritual concept and we do take communion together and stuff like that. And the Orthodox believe that that, uh, what they call it a mystery that it, it turns into literal, uh, bread and blood, um, more power to them. Uh, I'm not gonna, that's, that's not a hill I'm willing to die on. That's the ritual um, the apostles followed. That's right. the ritual that right. all the no, apostles no, no. What, followed. What I'm saying, what I'm saying is that they're talking, it's a mystery. I'm not saying that communion isn't something we shouldn't do. Yes, well, we no, should but do communion that. Of, so, the communion of the bread and the wine <laughs> and the interpretation of the bread and wine being literally the body and blood of Christ, like all of that. Where's that word? Way, way the way all the way back in the Council of Jerusalem. That was resolved okay, way but, even before Nicaea. That was interpreted but, very early in the church. And hold on, I let you I let you speak. I let you speak. Okay. You that was interpreted in the early church literally as being the blood and the body of Jesus Christ that is being consumed. And if what you were saying earlier regarding the blood and the body of Jesus not being literally speaking, if he was referring to the blood that were to be shed on the cross, then A, I'm sure that that analogy would stick a lot better or if he had said something like that on the cross and not the night before he was crucified. But B, in places like the Garden of Gethsemane, he begs God. He says that if there is any way whatsoever that you could possibly redeem humanity that does not require me to die, then let that be You're the putting case. words in his mouth. No, I'm not. He basically begs God. He asks God. And is there well, any other way I have moving a, a forward? a point to make also. Um, you said that it wouldn't make sense that he would say it like the night before the crucifixion and not while he was being crucified. But I don't know if that's totally a valid argument because he was the slain yeah. lamb from the foundation of the earth. I mean, it was no surprise to him. So there are foreshadows of that sacrifice from Genesis all the way through the crucifixion. If he knew that from the beginning, then why would he ask God why he forsaken him? Say that again. Because he was it in agony. It calls you to the proverb. No. No, no, no. It calls you to the proverb. If you pull up the entire proverb and read the whole thing where he is using that scripture, God never forsook him. I didn't I say used that to he think did that too. actually forsake him. I'm saying that that is what He's, Christ um, said. Right, well, but, you, you, but at, you asked why he did it. And oftentimes oh. Jesus says something to point us back to scriptures to have a better insight as to what it is he is actually doing. All right. I mean, fair um, enough. like I said, it's totally up to you as far as how you inter well, interpret it. We at, um, by the way, something that, oh, sorry, go ahead, Chad. Well, I was just going to say we actually get it from here. Um, so it's in context. I don't want to, well, the word of God should never bore anyone. But um, I'll start. Uh, this is where Jesus is talking, <laughs> to his, is talking to his apostles. Okay. It's John 6. Uh, begin If you want to look it up, it's John 6. It begins with 51. Um, well, yeah, I might as well go from there. Jesus says, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I will, which I shall give for the life of the world. Now you can, that part you can take as a metaphor if you want. Okay. Right. I would agree. That's why that's I said it's, part. yeah, it's. However, however, the Greek. Changes that's why I'm saying it's. The Greek changes down here. The Jews therefore quarreled among themselves saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said to them, most assuredly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the son of man, the Greek word there, mm -hmm. and I should have my Greek, uh, uh side by side with me and i don't uh we, you can look it up the greek word there and i don't know why it escapes me probably because i've been running around like a madman literally means when he says when in this verse when jesus says unless you eat the flesh of the son of man eat i'm looking right. at the word eat the greek word means to chew or gnaw mm -hmm. Yeah. So literally eat. Okay, good, Rosie. You you looked it up yeah. already. And, you have and no see, life in you. Whoever eats well, my blood drinks my blood has eternal oh, life. Oh yeah. I have meditated so. on this. And another thing I want to point out about that is if 
if you and I'm not exactly sure where it is, if anyone has a quick Google search where they can pull up the scripture, there is scripture when um, God is called in the Old Testament where God is called uh, Moses to himself. And then there are elders that are further down the mountain. And what they see is one like the son of man, the Lord. Um, mm -hmm. on like a plate above the or uh, above the world, like he he's not actually he won't even touch it because it's so contaminated. And um, what the scripture says is that they ate and drank of him. So there is another way, and I'm not I'm not like I said, you know I respect you and and I have you know if that's the way you believe that 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 is a mystery thing, that's fine. That I don't have any qualms with that. What mm -hmm. I'm saying is that my understanding is that there is more than one way to consume. We are consuming him, who he is, his essence, his, his life, his purpose right. into us consumably. We don't just consume with food in our, in our, in our mouth that goes mm -hmm. to our stomach. We can, we are called consumers. We consume mm -hmm. books. We, you know, they call you buy a car. You're a, you're a, con, you're uh, a consumer because you purchase a car, you purchase a house. You don't eat those things, but you yeah. do eat them. Yeah, you, because well, you, you certainly don't it's chew a, or it's gnaw. It's a pleasure to you. Yeah, yeah, you certainly don't do either of those. You right. don't chew or gnaw. Right, them and see, see right. Those but eat. you kind of do. That's, that's, when you that's eat, that's when you great. read the scriptures, that's what you're doing. Oh, that's, that's the great word there. And let me ask you. I mean, I just want your opinion on that. Seriously, you're oh, wrong. And, and get this why, why, out, why would uh, the people? Why would the people around him say, "What is this he speaks of"? I can't follow this cat anymore. Because, because, crazy. yeah. I, I mean, what are you talking about? How? Are because we they to knew exactly you? what he was saying. There's, he's literally saying, "You got to eat my." But flesh. those are people. His apostles okay, but, but, were even going to leave, except for when Peter said, but who shall we go to, Lord, for you? you have yeah, you have the words. Eternal life. Yours oh. is the words of eternal life. Mm. We Chuck, eat and chew guys, on your words. Guys, can I, just, can I just pump the brakes real quick? I think this conversation is being far too productive, okay? I think we're boring <laughs> Brett. I think we're boring Brett over there, okay? We're, we're supposed to be talking about him, and we're supposed to be slandering his innocent soul. So no. if we can get back to besmirching the innocent, innocent, the innocent untouched, innocent. unblemished soul. I don't think so. I mean, come on. There's only two <laughs> sinless entities in all of history. There's Jesus and there's Brett. I mean, come on. Is he really? Does he have any sin? Aiden. Well, yes. I just, I all right, I have a question to ask for you, Brett, if I'll tell you what, I wasn't going to do this, but I'm going to be a bold. Oh, freak. boy. Hey. hey, Brett, if you're man enough, hop on the channel. I'll let you into the chat room. You think he's going to defend you? Want to defend wait. yourself, Brett? Show us the man you are. Not wait, hiding, what, what is going funny. on here? Jesus. You started, Aiden. Hold oh, what's on. Going on. I'm besmirching somebody's that name. Wasn't, I, that I, wasn't Aiden. That was Jason. All right, hold that was on. was Jason? I yeah, I'm here. I listen to the whole Eucharist thing. Everyone be silent for a minute. Oh, hi, Jason. I want this crystal clear. Brett, if you're listening right now, you know how to get to my channel. I'm sure you'll you're you're you are techie. Um if you're man enough, come aboard and defend yourself. I want you to tell me that you just want to prevent uh befriend Ken. Not for his friendship. You just want his uh, view. You just want views and money. So if you want to defend what I just said or uh, tell me I'm wrong, you're welcome into my chat room. Oh, oh so you're telling me there, pastor, quote unquote, Chuck, <laughs> that here i'm just i'm supposed to come on there and just get slandered all day and get the shit insulted out of me all day long i don't think so there buddy i think Dude. i'm just gonna lurk in the chat so what's the controversy language. here? language jason here's <laughs> aiden there wasn't sorry. sorry about that language hey i'm sorry i try my best okay i have i i just i, I know you were you were okay i have to yeah and i know you were um 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 
trying to pretend like you were him. And I, I get that because I watched one of his videos yes, uh, earlier today and they had a count for how many times he cussed. Oh, it was <laughs> ridiculous. Uh, uh, anyway, I'm, be, I'm being very serious, Brett, and then you guys can talk all you want. Brett, one more time. If you're listening, you're always saying what the man you are. Come to the chat. You will not be insolvent out of here. We really want to hear your side of how how much you want Ken Hoven's friendship. You don't want his views, do you? I mean, get views from that. And you don't want to make no money on YouTube. So anyway, Brett, there's the invitation. It's up to you. Let's see what kind of man you are. So this just in, breaking news, shots fired by Priest. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> okay so first off i heard the Eucharist conversation it took a lot of self-control not to interject but it seems like y'all were well into it by the time i hopped in um, are you willing to die on this hill my love yes yes i am willing oh, to die on the hill of the eucharist yes no, i am okay well, okay hold on okay hold on willing to hold die on, on let me say and we're willing to die on our hill we should just let each other die let in me peace. let me say something now Okay, but before you before you interject, because I didn't get to say it when Aiden was speaking, because he's like, you talk, or no, you give me a turn. I'm like, okay. I wasn't going okay. to interject. You're actually, down 10 but... seconds. Go ah! ahead. Let, let, let Rosie speak. What? Okay. Right, go ahead. Okay. For the record, okay, Jason, like I said, I have respect, love, and all that. Um, If it turns into his literal blood and, bo- and body inside me, that's cool. That would be like a mystery that I don't know about. <clears throat> and and I'm I'm fine with that. But it's something if I don't know, because I do partake in such a thing. You know, we do communion. Um and and, and so be it. It's some, you know, ignorance. This is, you know, my understanding is, you know, the one that I that I had said. And I think that um he was talking. Uh, uh, um, Chuck was saying the part where they're on the I think it was part of the Sermon on the Mount or the people were following him because they had fed him once or he had fed them once and they're, he's like you know you come to me because I fed you what you need is the, the, the food of uh, eternal life and then he, he said that part now the communion was something done in the upper room with the inner circle And it was done prior and the veil was still like they, like they were not given the awareness until after the crucifixion. So, you know, my understanding is that there are, there are Jewish, there's Jewish context to that because they would, they would, um, it like transitioned. Um, Steve probably would know more about the, 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 the feasts. But it it had to do with the Passover feast, and that's what they did prior to the Passover. Something I could be incorrect, and somebody could correct me. But um, now, Jason, she mentioned you by name, so you do get a rebuttal. Well, I mean, I'm not really looking. I wasn't even going to interject. I was just joking. It took a lot of self control not to interject. Um, but what I will say is, is I. Well, right, first I, off, I'm, I, I already I, interjected before you came in, Jason. Go ahead. Let's hear it from your side, too, which you're going to say basically the same thing I did. But go ahead. Well, honestly, it's like you guys are both I orthodox. I <laughs> cannot believe I'm saying that. this, but I'm a little bit more concerned about the whole Brett Keen thing. So, oh, uh, so, so, you're, right, so what, you're do here? You, what do you need to be filled in? You're here to besmirch my name, Aiden, too. Fill huh? them in. <laughs> no, no, I, I'm not. I'm not on anyone's side here, really. Well, uh, let's hear, well, let's hear. Speak your piece, my brother. That's why you're in a room full of atheists, right? <laughs> atheists tend to like me, actually. But... <laughs> I, I say um, that because atheists is just a catch-all for people Brett doesn't like. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, then. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I'm just kind of. Um, the whole communion stuff aside, and I can't believe I'm I'm rushing that aside right now, but um but <laughs> I already answered it anyway. Please yeah, anyway. Um, but yeah, I just I'm just really concerned here because I'm actually really concerned about Brett. I've been concerned about Brett for a while. <laughs> um no, I'm not I'm not joking here. This is not a joke. I I'm just, I mean serious. Um 
I feel like he's getting into a lot of this drama and it's not good for him. Yeah, and he's the only one who has to walk away from all of it. It's yeah, so I, I'm just, and I, I told him several times that he doesn't really know me. I haven't gone on his show or anything, but I said, Brad, I said, you said that you were happy when you took a break from YouTube and whenever you were spending time with your wife and your kids and, and the kittens you have and all that good stuff. Why not just go do that instead of beating your head against the wall trying to deal with all this Kent Hoven drama? Um, you realize, though, you realize that he has literally been doing this on and off. I quit YouTube. I'm going to take a break. I need to go spend some time with my family. Situation. Like he's done that on and off for over a decade now. That but is that's what MO. I'm saying is, is that he that I I think and I'm not trying to be insulting. I think that that there's some health issues going on with that. Oh, some mental health stuff going on with that. So I don't really want to like challenge, you know, I don't want to like. I don't want to bait him. You know what I mean? It's fun though. It's fun to bait. It's fun to bait the man. Yeah, it can be fun, but I just Every like with Brett, while, I just don't think that someone like Brett is someone that that we should be trying to bait into like a like a, a huge discussion and debate sort of thing. All right. Well, um, you sit you sit on the fishing trawl up aside from the bayou while we're going shrimping down below, trying to look for some <laughs> manatees. All right. You can you can feel free and stand aside and have your hands washed of it, Pontius Pilate. That's okay. I have no problem with that. But like I said to uh, uh, Skylar the last time we had one of these rooms, some of us are just trying to sling some mud over here. Come on now, man. Are well, we gonna, I'm just saying this because Father Charles is orthodox. And I'm I know orthodox. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> so I was I'm... just telling him my opinion on, on all of that. Um, You know, I just I just think that we need to be real, you know, with someone like Brett, I just think we need to be real careful. Yeah. Oh, Jason. Mm hmm. Yeah, I would agree I, with that, and I want everyone to understand when I made Jason were you here when I made the announcement. I am I invited Brett to come. Yeah, I, I was okay, here. Okay, I wasn't. Uh, that was a true invitation because he talked, and I and I agree with you. There's probably some mental issues going on there, some health issues. However, he can sit back in his dark sunglasses in his dark corner of whatever <laughs> room he sits in and spew all this hate to everyone else that's why i invited him to come here and i said let's see what kind of man you are i just Pastor wanted Trump. to let you know where i was coming from right oh, Pastor like, Trump. yes sir yeah. yeah i seen on this one video video he did with of nick and uh adam on there he told adam that uh there's a lot of nonsense he talked about he and on the end he said tell Adam that Aiden's trash or something? That guy's a jerk. Well, of course he says that I'm trash in one section of his videos, but then in another, the very first time I actually have a physical interaction with the guy, like, over any media whatsoever, which was the comment section of his video, he was like, oh yeah, you did a great job to break Mr. Hoven's situation, Aiden. You absolutely destroyed him. And then next thing you know, I'm just an idiot that doesn't know what I'm talking about. It's the Brett Key narrative. That's the thing I've always stressed to you, Logan, and that's the thing that I'll stress to everybody here, is, is that he, ex he acts as if he is the only person on the internet as if he's the only person that broadcasts video and is just completely in control of the narrative whereas people have recorded what you've said Brett just like what you do to everybody that you talk with they've recorded you and now you have your previous things that you've said to compare to your current things that you've said so well, he can't be in control of the narrative because I'm in control of the narrative <laughs> oh, I didn't know. I didn't know you're a Kent Hovind. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll just back off. That's a pretty good. Yeah, voice I'm Kent Hovind. Oh, damn. That's a pretty good voice filter you got there. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I guess we could get Brett Keen to descramble that. He is the expert voice descrambler. He can somehow make anybody's voice uh, say something extremely hateful and rude and disgusting towards him. It's yeah, just, I appreciate just... that, Ada and Steve. Help me set that up. The only thing it takes for him to say those horrible things is when he stabs you in the back for no reason publicly for everybody to see for like no real reason whatsoever. I mean, like besides that minor detail, everybody just hates him for no reason. Okay, so <laughs> I'm not really Kent Hoven, and now I feel personally attacked. <laughs> um, and we're not supposed to hate anyone. Sure, we are. Come on. It's not. It's Am not I fun. talking to Aiden? No, you're not. Again, no, not, okay, see, no, I not. chew on the flesh of Jesus, and the Jesus says, love your enemies, do good to those who persecute you. So you may not follow him, but I'm obligated. Me and 
Jesus aren't on speaking terms right now, okay? I'm just going to let you know right now. I mean, he ghosted me, tried to take him out, you know, like have a nice, really nice day with him. It wasn't even sexual. I was just going to take him to a nice dinner. We were going to talk things over and I was going to get some things figured out. What? What? I'm just talking about how I'm trying to further my relationship with Jesus. If that makes you uncomfortable, I'm sorry, but I feel like I'm listening to a family. That's not what I mean. He ghost he ghosted me. Is and this not on speaking terms right now? Is this by any chance, like in all seriousness, is this by chance like a very short version of how you feel towards God? Oh, I mean, like, like if you, you actually want like to get abandoned, you. Oh no, I don't feel like God abandoned me whatsoever. I feel like in order to feel abandoned, I have to presuppose that God exists, which I don't. I mean, I've said on many an occasion, I would prefer for an ex- a universe in which god exists and where there's an entity that cares about us on an individual level and actually wants us to be saved and that there's some sort of afterlife yeah. sure that's all yeah. very so what's your hang up what's well, your hang up actual no, lack of any liar. evidence whoa who is that um um oh, who that is there's someone it's, in the background it's daria yeah. it's daria yeah. oh, okay. i told her i was live and she's continuing to speak um so there's no evidence for creation there's no evidence for god's existence lighter lighter i'm sorry I'm the, afraid. Fact, <laughs> the fact that you woke up this morning should tell you that god exists i mean yeah. the fact I mean, that i woke up okay okay morning. here here's a thing to ponder here's a better thing to ponder okay you go into the woods you see a fire pit Surely, some intelligent life, most likely human, that's the only one I know, can actually make a fire pit. Okay? Science shows intelligent hey, design. Rosie, um, you may want to, like, cut your mic when you're not speaking. Yeah, because that's, uh, um, that ground yeah, is getting... Um, all that I have to say to that is, is that in response um your fire pit analogy there nature itself has created things far more complex than something as simple as a fire pit nature has created things as complex as fission reactors that it would be in the presence of specific uranium composites hold on i've just finished speaking um in the presence of a of certain uranium deposits layered with a layer of limestone and a layer of granite natural nuclear fission reactions will take place place and they're estimated to have taken place for as long as 200,000 years at a rate of 10 kilowatt hours so we have a very substantial source of not only heat but electricity thermal electricity coming from the yeah. source and that happened over 2 billion years ago and I don't think okay. that that's the case because some god some creator randomly decided that he's going to create some fission reactor 2 billion years ago for no reason whatsoever I think that there isn't any presiding force over this universe Why do you and that there's no there's evidence no for there being for any presiding force <laughs> That there's no reason. Wait, for but it. how did it do that? How did I assume it do that there's that? no reason. I assume that there's no reason well, for it because there's no demonstrable purpose for that existing. Well, except to glorify God. Well, I don't know how well, a nuclear fission reactor that, glorifies I mean, God when it's hundreds of meters under the ground. So if I may interject here, because I just want to frame this conversation. If y'all don't mind. Uh, go ahead. Um, I've, I'm three minutes past my break here, so I'm going to have to go, unfortunately. I'm oh, that's sorry. sad, man. I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, all right. Um, but I will be back. I've um, Hold on. Let me check. Okay, so I'm off work in an hour and a half. I don't know if this is still going to be going by then, but I am off Maybe. work in an hour and a half. It Let's might be. It. I may not be here, but yeah. But try, to keep, try to keep my seat warm for an hour and a half, guys. I'll talk to you in a we'll bit. Try. Okay. See you, buddy. <laughs> Thanks, all right, Aiden. Aiden. Have a good one at work. Thank, Thank you very you, much. Aiden. Do you tell the vision? That's Wesley, not Aiden. Oh, but he said something about the vision. And Wesley says you should tell the vision or you're in war. Well, I'll just bring this you up real quick. I, to I bring Wesley. it up every time. I was hoping Aiden would be in here when I said it. A lot of these things with evolution, I admit readily, I, I'm I'm far from an expert. Um one of my talents the guy gave me was math. And I'm, I'm going to be very bold here because science is, it makes no sense with math. I'm going to come right out and say this mathematically evolution is impossible. 
So <clears throat> maybe God used something else. Uh, but I go with the math probably because I understand math. So, you know, I am being biased, but the math, just, math does not work for evolution. So I find a lot of discussions about God's existence to be very pointless and unprofitable. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is there are big flaws in the arguments for God's existence. And, the, and ironically, you can find the very same flaws in the um, in a lot of the rebuttals to the mm -hmm. arguments for God's resistance, <laughs> for God's existence. <laughs> Um, so, um, but the, the reason why I don't think that these, besides that, and, and there's still maybe some conver interesting conversation there, right? But you can't just demonstrate like independent of like conventions or axioms that God exists. Mm -hmm. Um, you could perhaps demonstrate from an axiom that God exists, but that's not really going to get you anywhere where someone doesn't accept that axiom in the first place. Um, so a lot of arguments are sort of relative to the presuppositions of the individual, Mm -hmm. And Aiden's presuppositions as an atheist is going to be totally different than ours. Sure, absolutely. I totally agree with that. Uh, that's a fact. Um, no, I am not on either side is right. I believe that God and exists. And I, have my, I have my reasons for that. <laughs> I have my reasons yeah. for believing it, mainly the evidence surrounding the resurrection of Christ and also the evident, the historical testimony of the church, the Eastern church over the past 2000 years. Um I would offer that, and plus the way the, anthrop the Christian anthropology seems to very, very explain very well the, the nature and tendencies of humanity, Aiden. That's that's what I would point to for evidence that God exists. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't claim to be able to take that evidence and demonstrate to an atheist that God exists, because in order for an atheist to agree with me, they'd have to accept my arguments and accept my conclusion. Um, so it would be pretty nonsensical for me to expect to, you know, someone who's an unbeliever. Just to just, uh, yeah, the TV in the background's pretty loud, Rosie. Thank you. Go ahead, Jason. Sorry. Um, it's all right. But anyways, but you have these conventions that these arguments are relative to. And until we can agree on what the convention should be, mm -hmm. then we're not going to get anywhere with the discussion. Right. So well, it's, like, yeah. it's, like, it's like me real quick. This is a quick interjection, Jason, really. It'd be very quick. Uh, you, you made a great point there. Um, if I use my mathematics, uh, I might be able to um, convince, I'll use the word, con convince an atheist or unbeliever that mathematically, just speaking of evolution, that it's improbable. But then he can turn that argument around on me and say, well, use your math to prove that there is a God. So. Fibonacci sequence. But anyway, so I, I just wanted to say that because I, I just mm -hmm. think that a lot of times when these when these discussions happen, I just feel like they go absolutely nowhere. Well, it doesn't hurt to try to put a stone in someone's shoe, though. We might not be able to convert them. I mean, that's the Holy Spirit's job in the first place. Right. But we should be a bridge to speak truth, even if somebody isn't right at that moment ready to hear it. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm pretty persuasive, and I have, you know. Yeah, and, you got to plant the seed. Go ahead, Jay. Yeah, well, I, I yes. believe in that, but I feel like there's more than one way to plant the seed. I don't think that. That the that arguing about That's whether true. or not God exists is usually the best starting point. I think usually the fruit is, and um, and also, um, I have convinced people that God exists before. I've given my arguments and stuff, and and they they con over the Christianity, but you know, I, not everyone's going to accept that. But I think that the, that really, we you know, starting with loving our neighbor is like where we start with with showing the evidence that God exists because there has to be something in us that's different. Um, someone yeah. like Aiden that, that is very well studied and has looked at a lot of these issues. Um, there's probably not a lot of, of profit in spending a lot of time, you know, arguing with him about these issues, which he has clearly studied. All right. So what I'm saying is there's a time, there's a time and place. And like with Aiden, I just don't, uh, if, if anything brings Aiden over, you know, it's, it's, it's probably, it's probably not going to be some, I don't think it's going to be some sort of philosophical argument. Right. I still that say. It doesn't uh, hurt to try though. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to put words in Aiden's mouth. Um, maybe we'll all still be here when he gets back. But when I interviewed him, 
I took it, but I don't want to, I didn't want to, um, uh, I don't want to say what I think. I think he's right on the edge, but I, I would rather him define that. He's very okay. knowledgeable, especially about the Orthodox faith and the Roman Catholic okay. faith, for that matter. But yeah, unless I'm reading him totally wrong, he is, he's, he, he walks a thin line between being a believer and being an atheist but well I, it's I, good I, that I, he I, wants I'd rather, there to be one i'd rather um it come out of his mouth than mine because right. I could be wrong. yeah yeah uh, rosie hmm. hi yes hi how are uh, you all right uh have you heard about brad going crazy Mm, um, as opposed to what? I don't know, like a I, particular incident? <laughs> yeah, uh, he. I don't know. <laughs> I seen a video of him saying that he said that Stephen's the best friend ever, and all that stuff. But now I don't know where he turned on Stephen and uh, messed up his channel and stuff. Mm-hmm. Messed up. And, yeah. And, yeah, and now he looks like he's friends with Ken again. <laughs> he hates Ken. Now he's his friend again. Well, I'm no, glad that they reconciled. I'll just leave it at that. Uh, I try not to get in into the bottom feeder discussions. Right. Well, I'll just say this about <laughs> that video. Um, I think it was Mark Stoney that said, um, and I'm sure Mark knows that Brett took that video down um watching kent's how he spoke and his body language uh kent was very guarded talking to him which uh anyone should should have been so um i don't know if you picked up on that or not rosie but he was very guarded he almost had a shake in his voice Kent heard him. well also brett <laughs> kept guiding him towards you know uh a particular topic right i think you know what i mean pastor and yes, wanted him to elaborate on the dangers of that topic like i have a real good feeling that's going to end up as some shorts mm. here soon i hope yeah. i'm wrong i pray i'm wrong no, i pray I, that Brett oh, was being but yeah he was you, he you was guiding hurt, him into saying it. some stuff that could be sounding hateful mm-hmm Hey, Brett, if you're listening, that's a big no-no. I mean, all these things that you're doing, you know, the, it thou shalt like not cool, be a false like witness. Cool, it sounds like Kool-Aid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the, God really frowns on that kind of stuff. And, uh, and if you really are a child of God, you, you know, <laughs> he will discipline you. The Lord God is a very powerful God, and it is a very scary thing to fall into the hand of the living God. And I say that from experience, and I would just turn back now. You don't, it is better for him to bless you for doing the right thing than for him to discipline you because you're doing the wrong thing. And he will. Absolutely. He is faithful. Oh, Stephen. That's all I got to say. Steven, I, I seen you uh, Snapchat Logan. of what, what uh, Brett just said about Ken on his channel. <clears throat> I sent it on Facebook to you. Oh, goodness. So I have to go to Facebook. All right, let me pull this up. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry if you guys see me chewing. I'm, uh, I'm sucking on a peppermint. It's all right. <laughs> that was another really thing that, that he was. Speed as a video. I thought it was a picture. It was staying so still. Oh yeah. And he was he was like burping and cuss. I was just like, oh, why? Oops. Hey, Father Charles, can you check your Facebook messages? I just used my text message. Oh, okay. I, it didn't show that you read it, so I was just curious. Let's see. 
Hey, Logan, could you check, possibly check your send messages. those messages to Pastor Chuck? I will. What Who is check it? their text messages. Who's Logan sent messages? All right, Logan, I want in. Send them to me. All right. Everyone got quiet. All right. I can go to Facebook. <laughs> I was trying to rattle Hold on, on, you know, so there's no dead air. <laughs> <laughs> Kent Hove, an official, and I talked live earlier today, but he brought up things that he knew caused his own channel to get strikes. Then he went up deep into why he agrees with Matt Powell views on homosexuality. The things he said could be deemed as hate speech and harm my channel, whether I disagree. See, I told you guys. Uh, that's the terrible. He said could be deemed as hate. Yeah, he what? already that's did it. So he terrible. my radio and watch the video. I told Pastor Hoven not to trust. Wow. Me. Wait a minute. Who wrote this? I'm sorry. These this people. Is, this was on Brett's channel. Brett. Uh, let me. I, I got to look at this now. I'm sorry. Brett I'm going to Facebook, this. guys. All right. It's his YouTube channel, I believe. Wow. Well, there's. All right, let me see if I can blow it up. Let's see. I. Uh, I'm is this go the one that was sent? Is this minute, the one? Guys. Is this the one that was sent by Logan? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah Thanks, Logan. You just confirm what Steve said. You're welcome. That's so terrible. So disappointing. Holly. How does he sleep at night? Oh boy. Oh boy. Mm. Mm -hmm. I have to see if there's still a visitor on my porch. <clears throat> Just hear them sleep. Oh, and Steve, I sent you a video. She's still out there. Mm. Um, you sent me a voice message. No, it's a video, and it's probably not. It, it, it was like a couple minutes long, so you know it takes ten thousand years to upload it. So you, it's probably not fully uploaded yet. So when you have those questions about that noise from earlier, just oh, okay, that does it. I'll see if I can cut that out when I repost this, but I'm not even recording, so I have to trust Pastor Charles to not delete it. <laughs> oh, the video? No, just let me know when you get <laughs> got what you need, okay? That's all. Yeah, I'd appreciate you to cut that. Yeah, I'll take it by awesome. tomorrow morning. I'll leave it online. This okay. one, this one's a keeper for sure, this broadcast, so I'll be editing it too. So it'll be interesting how we edit it. Definitely, Steve. <laughs> well, mine is uploading as we speak. That's why my internet's going a little slow. Um, okay. um it's sixty-one percent uploaded, and there's fifty minutes left. Okay, that's why your voice. That that's why your voice is going. Be posted. Ah, ah. Oh, okay. Yep, my bad. It's doing pretty good though. If you're doing an upload and uh, talking at the same time. So I came in a little late. Is there a particular topic that we're wanting to discuss tonight, or is it just kind of whatever? Well, we, we were, we're actually going, going to start. We're going to start with the, the break channel. Team. They don't have uh, the topic already. Uh, so everybody talk about what? Jesus or something. We we were we we had planned to comment on the Brett King uh, show to, uh, to start off, and then uh, whatever yes, whatever we segued into was up for grabs. So yeah, if you have right. something you want to go to, uh, Jason, go ahead. That's what you I just want to yeah. say I think that the chat's a mess right now. Oh, uh, Pastor Chuck. What, yes. What was Brad talking about? Did he already turn on Kent again? Why is the chat a mess? No, that's what you shared. That's yeah, he did turn on him. You confirmed what Stephen was 
really hoping he wouldn't do with it. <laughs> oh. So, yeah. That's crazy. It's terrible. Bear false witness slanders. Uh, right Jesus. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask you, Jason, what uh, Stephen asked you. Why did you say the chat's a mess? I just feel oh. like, so Aiden's, you know, he wants to believe that there's a God. Right. And, um, you know, and whether or not he does that, you know, only he knows truly, you know, I think he's being truthful. Mm -hmm. um, but there's all these people with all these different theologies coming at him, like completely different theologies trying to oh, convince I, him mm -hmm. that God exists. Right. I agree. Uh, I don't know if I, if I was in Aiden's shoes, that would be pretty confusing to me. Yeah. Well, like I said, I know for a fact he's very up on the Orthodox faith and the Roman Catholic faith. He's very knowledgeable on both. I would say equally knowledgeable. But I, but I, I don't know. I just, you know, it's not unreasonable to want evidence for mm -hmm. something. I mean, God's a pretty grand claim, right? So I don't yeah. think it's unreasonable to want evidence. Um, I think we gotta be careful. We gotta think about what that evidence is and and what we're in what it is we're looking for. Um, well, I think it comes down to a worldview. I mean, it's it's a pretty big claim to say that something came from nothing, too. Well, it, uh, it is right, but I, you know, just <laughs> my experience, like with evangelizing as an Orthodox Christian, mm -hmm. is that when presented in a way that's consistent with historical Christianity. There's a lot about God and a lot about scripture and a lot about the history of the church that really appeals to the natural tendencies of human nature. Right. Mm -hmm. And whenever I am presenting my faith, that's where I always start is, is at the humanity, you know, and, uh, uh that's a good place to start. Yeah. yeah and, um, but you know, whether or not someone's going to be convinced, you know, that's going to, you know, be their choice. God loves everyone. Doesn't matter if they're a Christian or an atheist or uh, anything else, you know, pagan, what have you. I do apologize, guys. I'm back. Sorry, Jason. Go ahead. You're good, brother. Don't worry about it. Where did you say you started from? I was also away from keyboard. Why don't we start where we all where we all have in common, and that's that's our humanity, human nature. And um, okay. I have found, like in my life, <laughs> and also just in Orthodox teaching, that there's a there is a there's a human nature um, and the nature of humanity is to love. Right. And because of that, um, our human nature tends to respond to love. Uh, for example, in the court, whenever you see like in a courtroom where you have like a murderer stood accused of killing a parent's child and the child, you know, and, and uh, the parent, you know, goes and says, you know, publicly in the courtroom that they forgive the murderer, everyone in the courtroom starts boohooing, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. Uh, and, and it's like it's like seeing the light of humanity, which is love shining through a tragedy. Mm -hmm. So I always so like whenever I discuss it, I always try and start on the basis of humanity being love and how we should treat others, which is usually agreement. And then mm -hmm. depend and then where the conversation goes from there will always depend on what the other person says about it. Because I because I already know what my opinions are. I want to know what they're what they're thinking. Right. And, Makes and sense. have a conversation with them and you know and if they don't if they don't accept christ right then i'm not going to consider that a failure mm -hmm. um only god's the judge um so i don't i don't go into the the conversation with the idea that somehow his eternal destiny is, is predicated on whether or not i convince them that god exists um so uh but anyways i was just remarking like i said the reason why i thought the chat was a mess is because you get all these different Theology's coming to aid in at the same time. <laughs> oh well, I'd have to agree with you if that's yeah, it, it, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've never, I've never really heard him speak on Prote Protestants, you know. Um, but boy, and I'm, I'm just repeating myself what I said already. I really haven't uh, heard him ever speak on uh, Protestants, but uh, very knowledgeable. I know I'm repeating myself, guys. Roman Catholicism and, so, of, course, and of course Eastern Orthodoxy. So, uh, Pastor Chuck, I yeah. want to say thank you to Logan for sending those to me. I got them to Ken, and he uh, just got off the phone with me, and he's aware of it. 
He's also going to write Brett in writing that he doesn't have his consent to chop it up and play it individualized, but has to play it in its entirety. Um, hopefully that'll work. Yeah. Uh, you're welcome. Mm. You, I you are the man, Logan. Oh, thank you. I follow <laughs> Brett's channel. Of course you did. Yeah. <laughs> It's crazy. Oh, here's where Brett turns on him and his friend on him. Yeah. <laughs> um, Rosie, seriously, do do a real and in depth study of John chapter six, uh, the one I was reading. Get yourself a Greek side by side. Um, with Greek word. I, I can't believe I still can't think of the Greek word, but it truly does mean chiller and all. And I, I think I'm not trying to convince you of anything. I just I, I think I know your personality somewhat. And I think you'd find it fascinating. That's why I don't want you to think I'm pushing orthodoxy your way. I'm just saying. No. So oh, yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> no, seriously. No. Knowing your personality, I, I think you would find it fascinating. Especially. Yeah, knowing I, the, do you know what it the is? Greek Rosie? words uh, Jesus uses. And when he uses chilling off. Mm -hmm. yeah. do, you, do you know why Pastor Chuck's trying to convert you, Rosie? It's because I <laughs> confided in him early, uh, earlier today that my mother is dating a Catholic. And now he's out to get all of us. He's going to push the rest of us over the finish line. So I know Father Charles is always pushing orthodoxy, but just know, guys, I'm always pushing orthodoxy on everyone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate your honesty. Yeah, I call him uh, Jason the Zealot. Yes, absolutely. The Orthodox Zealot. I wouldn't consider myself my, a zealot. My mother calls me a zealot. I, 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 I don't mean, understand why. I mean, are you, you guys getting love him or you hate zealots him? in a positive way? Well, I'm I not. meant it. I meant it as a compliment to Jason. I hope he yeah. took it that way. That's how I meant it. He's I mean, very, I did. I just rejected the compliment. I, I, I always, I always tell Jason he should be a priest or uh, get ordained. Uh, he's very knowledgeable in orthodoxy. He, I'm, I'm, I've always been impressed with him. So. Well, you guys know when the atheists get a hold of this, they're going to chop it up and say Jason and and Pastor Chuck, Father Chuck, had a huge falling out. Look at their differences. <laughs> yeah, I probably wouldn't even respond to that if that were to ever happen. Because I'm right, like, okay. Yeah, Father's yeah. Right, I know what's up, so it wouldn't be it's worth, worth it. it. That's so rather, I oh. that's that's how they make things up. Like it gets insane the things they come up with. Just out oh, of yeah, I've been air. on a lot of tabloid blog posts. You know, back when I used to be more out, more active in uh, in writing and stuff. I'm probably about to become more active again. I think I got a book in me, so I think I might start writing out the draft soon. Blessed are those who are okay. persecuted What's the book for on? my namesake. It's on Eastern Orthodoxy. Of course it is. I know y'all are surprised. It must be shocking. I am surprised. <laughs> I thought it was going to be on Bapticostals, uh, which is, you know, probably what I point to. I'm a little bad. Well, I will stuff. tell you, I will be writing a book eventually on the Messianic movement. So that mm. will be something that will probably happen down the road sometime, too. Well, if everyone can I make a suggestion, wait, if you're going to do quick, that after I say this, since everyone's accusing me of pushing orthodoxy, I'll just throw this little caveat in. Oh, let us goodness. never for, <laughs> let us let us never forget that there was only one church before the year 1054. There was only one church. Non Chalcedonians, though. I had to be picky. Sorry. You know I don't. You you know I don't ascribe to a particular branch or doctrine, right? I mean, just for right. the record. <clears throat> right. Like I am. We move. That's we, not we move true. Then. You're. Well, when people say that, I mean, I just say, okay, so you subscribe to your doctrine. I got it. No, <laughs> I I ascribe to the scripture. I ascribe to what the scriptures say, what he says to do, and we obey what he that, says right? to obey. We all we all claim that. Right. Yeah, but I mean, are we? That's why we should rub up against each other. You know, let let our that's thoughts. That's going to be taken be out challenged. of context. Oh well. 
You yeah. know what I mean. We know what you That says more about you than it does about me, Steve. That says more about you than it I'm says about me. I'm warning you guys. They will take everything and use it against let you. I'm trying. I'm telling be. you this in love. Well, let them. I'm totally innocent. Let it be is a Beatles song. But you yeah, no, we should have our views challenged. I, mean, actually, that's I, I think a it's wise. What about you know, Brad? I, no, Stephen was talking about the comment you made about rubbing up against each other. They'll take yeah, that like iron sharpening. They'll, they'll and edit now that they, and and now they have a them, clip though. of a priest saying it. Great job! Yeah. <laughs> Don't give them any more ideas, Steve. Stop it. To stop. <laughs> I'm. I'm. Wow. You know it. Just. Just pull it up. I'm done. Well, I'm an Orthodox priest. If I was to get remarried, I'm totally um, I have total permission of the church to rub up against my female wife. There you go. Chuck, I'm a little what? not I'm speaking a little of the flesh. That you didn't date my mom. What's that? I'm sorry, I missed that scene. I'm I'm a little upset that you didn't <laughs> date my mom. That that's you know at least orthodoxy is closer to Protestantism. What you guys are like in the middle. That's all a picture of your mom. She's good looking. Thank you very much. I'm sure she is. She's a good. I don't know what lady. she looks like. She don't look like Steve. She's a She's beautiful blonde. Is she? Oh, I've never shots seen fired. a picture. <laughs> Steven, you know how to throw some humor into it. I bet you get her your eyes from her. Though. Oh, you have really love. pretty eyes. No, actually, <laughs> it's crazy. Both sets of my grandparents on both sides of the family have the same color blue eyes. My parents have like the identical same blue eyes. And all seven of us kids have the same blue eyes. And our offspring has our blue eyes. Wow. I know I shouldn't have drank that coffee. I'll be right back, guys. <laughs> Steven. <laughs> Logan. <clears throat> yeah, uh, but Aiden is like the expert about Brett. He's a Brettologist. He knows uh, <laughs> all what Brett's going to do. And yeah. I was just going to say, in honesty, um, I've had a few interactions with Aiden, and not all of them were favorable, I guess, for either of us. But uh, I have to do say, he's an expert on many subjects. Especially. Aiden is a walking inside. Uh, we lost you. Hello? Where'd you go, Steve? I'm still here. You got cut off. How did I get cut off? I'm here. You were saying he was a walking encyclopedia and he knows a lot of war. Oh, well, he yeah, no, he knows a lot of subjects, just that he's a, he's an expert mm. in a lot of areas. Hmm. You know, it wasn't reason that brought me to the Lord. I mean, uh, so I'm, and, and I, if I would have had the reasons I probably would have, you know, converted a lot more easily. But I mean, mine was a supernatural experience. And then I found the scriptures that confirmed it was not a coincidence what happened. So I, I don't know what it is that will do it for him. But, you know, he's... The Lord promise it's a promise in the scriptures where he says, seek the Lord with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, you know, and it, if you seek, seek him, you will find him. So it's, it's something like a, you have to, between you and God and the darkness of your room is, I mean, not always, you know, some people are converted through reasoning and logic. But a lot of people come through experience. You know, God reveals himself in a special way to each individual. Just my thoughts. 
I mean, I can jump I have up a and down and for say all three of you. <laughs> Go for it. So, do you guys believe that God's divine intervention is still active in our everyday lives? Uh, of course. What does the scripture do say? Where we move at all? and no, ha- and have our being move and live I would agree. and have our being. Rosie, do you, you remember me telling you? Yeah, absolutely. Divine intervention. You don't. Okay, so you also my heart on limitless. My heart is beating. That's God's power. My brain is functioning. That's God's power. My my uh, arms, shoulders, and back. I'm talking beyond all that. I'm talking. I'm talking like blowing? Red Sea parting miracle acts of divine intervention, which I still well, believe happen all the time. Well, that's what happened. It was that kind of a thing that happened 23 years, 22, 20, 23 years ago. So if it happened then, surely, of course, he's doing everything he can to bring as many people into his kingdom. So the idea that there's a limitation in how God works now in comparison to the apostolic age is an idea that comes from Reformed Christianity, which typically is cessationist in its views. And um, mm-hmm. I was going to say it, you know, Reformed Christianity is not historic Christianity. It's only like you know, hundreds of years old. Um, you can't find any apostolic trace of their theology anywhere before the 16th century. And, um, and the- but if you look at the church fathers and you look at the lives of the saints, very clearly, there are still a lot of miracles that happen today. But I will preface this with by saying also that it is not up to us when these miracles happen. It is God that does the miracles and it's up to him when they happen and when they don't. You know, people ask, you know, um, why is it that Daniel wasn't eaten by lions, but St. Ignatius of Antioch was? We don't know. Only God knows. Uh, but there were other saints that were not eaten by lions when, when the lion, when they were cast into a lion's pit. You know, why were they not eaten? We don't know. Um, you know, miracles are of God. We don't have pe- – the, the one thing I will say is that I don't believe that we have like a ma- – like have some sort of key or magic wand that determines when a miracle is going to happen and when it doesn't, like what you see a lot in tele-evangelism. Right. Have you – uh, James, have you heard of the NAR? The New Apostolic Reformation, yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, um, that's getting I will a say lot there's of a lot of misinformation about that movement. I don't know if I'd even consider it like a <clears throat> movement. It's just um, a lot of it is pinned by reform cessationist um, attack dogs from discernment blogs. And whatnot. So anyone that that calls anybody nar, I'd be very cautious of believing anything they say because they're probably ill-informed. Um, there's a lot of you know, especially like people like Justin Peters. He mis- he re- misrepresents people all the time. Like I don't even agree with charismatic Christianity. I used to be one, but I don't agree with it. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> but like I see these sermon bloggers like Justin Peters, uh, JD Hall. Um, you know, I've even seen Matt Mike Winger and 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 other popular YouTube Christians misrepresent these people. If you want to learn about charismatic Christianity and about what it is historically, especially like the Word of Faith movement, I'd recommend take checking out uh, Rod Saunders' channel. He's a he was a student of Kenneth Hagen. He's Word of Faith, and uh, he has a you know he has a channel called Jew and Greek. So if you want to kind of get the record straight set straight on the origins of charismatic Christianity. In the Word of Faith movement, I would certainly recommend this channel because there's a lot of things that the Reformed people just get totally wrong. But I, even as a Reformed Christian, I recognize that Reformed Christians misrepresented almost everybody whenever I took their sources. So, so even when I was Reformed, I, I did not. Tr- and whenever a Reformed Christian said something, I always thought I better double check this because I know my camp is not very good at representing other. Yeah. People. Well, well, you know, and I appreciate and respect that, and I'm I'm very similar in that manner. That's why I asked you because you were you were bringing up things that were making me think of that. But um, it's just it's gotten a lot of buzz lately. It's interesting uh, to me. Uh, people, ministries that are completely unrelated have brought it up. And, you know, and I'm like, dude, wow, that's kind of it's coincidence, which I don't believe in. Um, but some of the things that uh, were warning and it's a, like they don't adhere to it. It's not like they claim that title. And yeah, as you always practice discernment, but um, there's one of the things that is a dangerous doctrine um, is the, the way in which they 
pray and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but the, it's like a proclamation rather than, you know, humbly coming before God and saying, you know, please, if it was, if it's within your will, um, you know, heal this person rather it's more of a demand in the way that the word, the, the, the phrases are, um, um, used. It's like, I declare in the name of Jesus that you're going to be, you're going to be healed. And there was someone in the NAR. I, I don't remember the names. It just came across my, my radar two, three days ago, uh, about a little girl who's, um, they did this and they had everybody around the nation praying for her. And they were doing that declaring, um, that she would be healed, but she died. And, um, you know, it, it shook a lot of people. And, but, you know, if they say, you know, the scripture tells us if this person prophesies this or that, and it doesn't come to, come to pass, then they're a false prophet. And in the old Testament, it even is like, if, if a prophet misprophesies or, you know, they, they say something doesn't come to pass, it, they're required to like stone them to death. The, they're not like I didn't send you the, the the punishment for this is death so that was just one of the the things yeah, that was sort of um came up in the radar and I found I found that interesting just because of my recent exposure to certain circumstances <clears throat> and I've had people pray that kind of a thing over the relationship between my mother and I um where I I claim I proclaim, you know, he says it's where two or more are gathered in my name and you ask for it, it shall be done. And, you know, part of me is there's this reservation. This is like, yeah, but if it's God's will, if it's so, his will, he will do that. Mind if I tell a but story? If he doesn't do this or that, he has his reasons here. Go ahead. Your turn. So I used to be charismatic. I used to be word of faith. And um, what? So, well, first off, prophecy is not foretelling the future. That's not what prophecy is about, first off. Um, prophecy is about revealing and speaking the things of God. Um, so you can be like, you could be preaching and you'd be prophesying, um, so to speak. It is not some sort of fortune telling thing that like a lot of people treat it. That is not prophecy. <laughs> um, now, prophecy can foretell the future. Um, it can, but that's very rare. Um, but I will say this. So I used to be charismatic word of faith and there was this light, the fire again, conference in Pensacola and the civic center. And, um, I've been to a couple of those. Yeah. So I, so I went to the first one they ever did it because it was, it was on, it was on, uh, around the anniversary of the Brownsville revivals, what they were celebrating. I think it was 25 years since the Brownsville revival, something like that, that happened here. In Pensacola, like when I was a kid, yeah, it, was, it wow. was the Brownsville. Yes, it was. Yes, yeah. It's, it's, so yeah, I, I remember it. I wasn't a kid anyway. Go on. Well, um, after that, there was this this high, right? After coming for, out of one of these things, I was really excited and felt like okay. I'd stepped into a new level in God, so to speak, to use charismatic language, common charismatic language. And we went to Brownsville that Sunday morning. Um, you know, we went to Brownsville that Sunday morning and, uh, you know, and a lot of people were there at Brownsville mm -hmm. because, of the revival conference, you know, a lot of people were very nostalgic about the, about the Brownsville revival and they wanted to go back to where it happened. And after the service, a lot of people stayed and they were praying for each other. They were laying hands on each other, mm -hmm. stuff like that. It was pretty much pandemonium. Yeah, uh, and um, so there was this lady that I knew. Her name is Stefania, and her her daughter Veronica had been sick with cancer, and um, so her her daughter was living in Jacksonville at the time. She was in Pensacola, but she moved to Jacksonville with her mother because the father kicked both Veronica. And Stefania out of his house because he wanted to shack up with another woman sort of thing. And um, so after the service, when we're all praying for each other, I prophesied, quote unquote, mm -hmm. to Stefania that her daughter would live. Mm -hmm. And about a year later, her daughter was dead. 
Mm. But I really had thought I'd gotten a word from God that that she would live, but she didn't. Mm-hmm. Um, and it wasn't that I was, you know, just saying stuff, and it wasn't just that I, you know, it wasn't just I was trying to fa- prophesy falsely. I had good intentions. Sure. But it's so easy to get wrapped up in the emotionalism that these movements encourage. And as a result, say things that are not true, whether it's in doctrine or in, or in predicting the future. Uh, you know, but I experienced that personally. And after that, I really thought, man, I need to be careful uh, that I don't do that again. And, uh, you know, but it's something to this day. Every, I, you know, I think about the damage I did a lot when I was in that movement. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, uh, anyway, I just wanted to share that, that I actually have done that before. Like, you know, mm-hmm. whenever I was charismatic. Well, do you, I guess you've heard of the, uh, I don't know if it was called the Toronto Awakening, whatever, Toronto something. That was before the Brownsville Revival. And that's actually yeah, one so, of the things that got the Brownsville Revival going because yes, it Don Kilpatrick, he wanted to Wait, wait let story. me finish about this Toronto. It's oh, brief. sure. Yeah. These people were uh, wiggling around on the floor and hissing like snakes. Now you're going to tell me that was of the mm. Holy Spirit? Give me a break. And I saw. And I actually, missed all that. I got disconnected. I actually uh, saw footage of that, and uh, it's it's almost mind boggling that this brown. I knew that was my point. Um, it was mind boggling to me that this Brownsville thing started after this craziness in Toronto. I'm mean, I'm serious. I'm sure you can find videos of it on our World Wide Web. I forget if it was. I've seen that Toronto, kind of stuff before. The Toronto Awakening, or it, whatever it was called, these people would be supposedly slain in the spirit, fall on the floor, and 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 literally uh, crawling around, <clears throat> hissing like snakes, oh, barking like dogs, and howling, howling oh. like dogs. So. Well, the whole thing is that when we're talking about the usage of spiritual gifts, like healing and things like that, those are only given to very spiritually mature people, like the saints. Not it just not just can I ask you something and and do stuff like that. And and in the charismatic move, they just kind of make everyone, oh yeah, anyone can do this, and that's not true. Yeah. Um, Can it be given and then taken away? Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Because can you elaborate? Well, it's just like anything. You can be on the path of salvation and veer off, and then in the end, you don't get it. The same thing goes with spiritual gifts, which are themselves a part of the paradigm of salvation. Mm -hmm. Um, So if you can lose your salvation, you can also lose anything else that comes with it. Mm -hmm. I have something that you guys might find shocking especially Pastor Chuck and Jason. So I grew up in the Pentecostal church. Yep. I grew up in the Pentecostal church, the first assemblies of God. And I love the the Pentecostal church. Um, And I love the passion with the praise and worship. But my understanding of speaking in tongues and the biblical definition really counter 100% what they do in the Pentecostal churches today. I mean, it's not the same thing. Um, it's something totally different. And I, I've always yeah. found that concerning. And also I have to say, and this pains me to say as a Pentecostal, um, but after someone speaks in tongues um, during a service or after a praise and worship, and then you have multiple people give an interpretation of God telling them that, that this is what it meant. And sometimes the interpretations are totally counter to one another. And, and I find that concerning too, if we're being honest. Oh yeah, I agree. So that's um, absolutely my take on that as well. So funny thing, a little bit of history about the Pentecostal movement. So whenever they first thought they were speaking in tongues, they thought they were speaking foreign languages. So they sent a bunch of missionaries out to different countries to evangelize using to- the gift of tongues. And no one could understand what they were saying. So then they said, you know what? This must be the tongues of angels, not the not the tongues of other other nations. <laughs> that, that, that was happening in our <laughs> revival. Yeah. 
You know, the other thing that I find very concerning for my Pentecostal brothers and sisters is they love being slain in the spirit. They love asking God to slay them in the spirit. But correct me if I'm wrong, gentlemen, all the times in the scriptures when someone was slain with the spirit, wasn't it usually a judgment? Didn't death follow? Well, that wouldn't be a formula anyway, right? Because just because only something's only described one way in the Bible doesn't mean it may it may not also be another way in a different situation. I will say that every time I went to have hands laid on me, they always pushed me over. <laughs> so I, I can mm. confirm that they do push you. You probably can't. I mean, yeah. yeah. You remember well, me? You know what? I've my my personal pastor didn't. I had two really great pastors, and they stuck pretty close to the biblical teaching. Um, but I've visited other churches in the Pentecostal, you know, denomination and yeah, you do get pushed, especially at revivals. That and they like to press in real hard on your stomach and say, you feel the burn, but really you just feel fingers pressing in your indigestion. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor Chuck. <laughs> oh, oh, I have um, go ahead. I need to go on my computer to get back in here because my phone's about to die. Okay, so you're coming back? Yeah. Okay, man. No, Logan, you only had one entry <laughs> ticket. Oh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, I'm yeah with Chuck, you remember me telling you just earlier. So just oh. for the record, okay. I don't hate Pentecostals. I was anything. just telling... Yeah, you remember me telling oh, you earlier that's, that that's I was different. slain in the spirit. And Yes, yes. What? And I said, oh, yeah, not like you see on the TV. <laughs> no, when I was talking to Pastor Chuck earlier, um, he was going on for about an hour how Jason doesn't like Pentecost. No, I'm kidding. All those dang rumors, man. Did yeah, you hear I the latest one about Chuck? Chuck. a shout out, and he's a Word of Faith guy. So, yeah. <laughs> Who? Rod Saunders uh, from Jew and Greek on YouTube. He does a lot of really good videos, like on the word of faith and clarifying what they believe and talking about the history. Mm. Like, for example, a lot of people think okay. because of a book that um, a guy, I think it was like D Horton or something wrote uh, about, about the word of faith movement. He claimed that E.W. Kinnon was a, a student of Phineas Quimby and adopted his ideas. And then Kenneth Hagen took, E.W. Kinney's ideas and sold them and then started preaching it on his own. But it's actually not how the Word of the Faith movement came about. The Word of Faith movement actually started with Kenneth Hagen and E.W. Kenyon actually wrote a paper against Phineas Quinsby's New Thought movement that they claim that the Word of Faith movement originates from. Uh, so clearly E.W. Kenyon was not a Phineas Quimby, uh, you know, acolyte. Um but actually, and and uh, Kenneth Hagen didn't even know about E.W. Kenyon until I think like the fifties, the nineteen fifties. Uh, and then right. he asked for permission from the E.W. Kenyon Foundation to use some of E.W. Kenyon's quotes because he liked some of the things that E.W. Kenyon, he was a Free Will Baptist pastor, by the way, uh, wrote down about healing and stuff. So there's a lot of misinformation about like this particular branch of Protestantism out there. So I'm I'm just saying like if you ever read discernment stuff about it, just be really careful. Because a lot of it's wrong. Have you guys heard of Have you guys heard of Doctor Adrian Rogers? He was three times president of the uh, Baptist Convention. I think in the either was either late eighties or early nineties. I've been listening to a lot of his sermons on YouTube lately, and they're really. I've never heard Who? of that. crickets. <laughs> Doctor Adrian Rogers. His ministry is called Love Was Finding. Never heard of him. Uh-uh. Send me a link. I'm curious. I will send you uh, a link. I will send everyone a link. Yeah, and I'll actually watch it. <laughs> Shots fired. Yeah, I did. I did not have time to watch all the <laughs> videos I was supposed to watch. Huh. <sighs> But I mean, why am I on the hot seat? Jason hates Pentecostal. You know, we don't live that far away from each other. Jason, you were talking about. 
<laughs> you were saying before, like you like you hate evangelicalism. Yeah, I do. But like my understanding of that and I don't need to find can can you guys define, each define it, yeah. evangelicalism? What what you that, each that's mean? what I was gonna do. That's what I was yeah, Jason, because let my, Jason go first though, and then you can describe what evangelicalism to you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Define so the word evangelical has very broad in meaning whenever we consider what the common public uses it as. Uh, there are evangelicals, for example, that accept evolution as a valid scientific theory and that even believe that God may have used evolution to create man. When I'm talking about evangelicalism, I'm talking about the more fundamentalist kind uh, where pretty much in, where pretty much anything outside the Bible is rejected as hearsay and only the Bible right. is the sole arbiter of truth. Um, you know, to the point to where like other sources outside of the Bible are either insignificant or just totally distrusted. Um, mm -hmm. This movement also tends to be very forceful about pushing their beliefs on the people. Um, for example, uh, you know, they tend to speak out a lot against the LGBTQ plus community and, and always try and, and voice any, at any chance and opportunity they get with an LGBTQ plus person that they don't believe or they don't agree with what they're doing. Um, and also they tend to not mind uh, being dishonorable in the way they go about with governance. For example, in the Supreme Court with the overturning of Roe versus Wade, how that came about with Mitch McConnell holding up Merrick Garland's uh, judicial seat um, so, that, so, that they, so that whenever Trump became president, that uh, Trump could appoint a different mm -hmm. justice that is a conservative and that would support the pro-life agenda, um, which is not right. It's not it's not the right thing to do to try and abuse a you know a government institution in order to try and bring about your religious belief and force it on other people. Um, so when I say when I think of evangelicalism, to summarize it, I think more of the fundamentalist variety and also people that tend well, to isn't that what abortion is. Uh, uh, abortion is forcing your belief on other people and it's actually forcing people who find abortion to be considered murder to actually pay for it through our taxes that's way worse i would say well we have to be clear here because i'm against a, i don't believe in any exception for abortion at all period um because i believe that the fetus is a human but in, mm -hmm. the, in the constitution in order for us to give legally the same rights to the fetus, we'd have to do an amendment to the Constitution because the Constitution does not define a fetus as a person. So right. we have to remember there's a legal issue and then there's a theological issue. Theologically, I'm against abortion. I think that the idea that the fetus is not human is heresy. But at the same time, I reckon I'm, I'm born into a country that's a bit older than me and that things have been working a certain way before I came into this world. And I actually like the result of what I've seen from the government that we have in place in the United States. Uh, and I don't think that we should you, try and say that we support this government while trying to subvert it by put by using abusing certain institutions in order to push our beliefs on other people. I have a question. Sure. Where in the constitution? Where in the constitution does it say that a fetus isn't a human being? Well, it doesn't have to say something in order for in order for it to be inferred from the constitution. Um, you know, the uh, for example. My name's Jason, and the Constitution doesn't say that Jason is a human being. It doesn't mean I can't legally think that I'm not a human being. Um, what I'll say to that, though, is that if you look at the history of abortion in the United States, like even after immediately after the writing of the Constitution, uh, abortion was permitted up until the time of what they call the quickening. That's when the mother feels a kick in her belly from the baby. That's whenever they said that this is that that abortion, it's too late to do an abortion. But there were other states, too, that had right had different regulations for abortion. Okay, wait, 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 wait. So, but shoot, J okay, but slavery used to be I mean, wrong. I mean, slavery is wrong, and it used to be like people used to be allowed to own slaves. So yeah, they absolutely. changed. They they changed the laws. That's the Fourteenth Amendment. Uh, yeah. To to you know, because they realize that's wrong. Should we, should we not voice for those who cannot speak for themselves? 
So I think it's a really beautiful thing when you look at the way that slavery was ended in the United States. At first, you had the Emancipation Proclamation, right, um, after the Civil War. And what happened then was that uh, that slavery was outlawed in the United States, but there was still a problem with how black people were treated. They were treated as second-class citizens, right? But then, um, you know, even after the passing of the 14th Amendment, um, and then it, it took another almost 100 years for uh, civil rights activists to have a victory and have it officially said uh, in the Civil Acts Rights Act that um, – you know, that 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 black people were equal to any other human being because the founding fathers, like when they found the Constitution, did not believe that black people were human. Um, so what we had was you had you had a shift. Well, in the I think it goes deeper in that, too, there, Jason. I think they knew they were facing a dilemma in the culture of the time. Yeah. Uh, some of the, uh, some of the founding fathers and uh, I know Thomas Jeff- Jefferson owned something like three, four hundred slaves. Uh, he contradicted himself. He said it's an immoral uh, plague on our society. Of course, he did nothing about it in his lifetime. Um, but um, anyway, it was a dilemma for them. They write this constitution, and then you had the other founding fathers say, well, how can we say this in the constitution when we're holding human beings in slavery? So it, it it was a big dilemma. It it it's much more complex than anyway. Go on. Yeah. So um. So the American, you know, and I and this is another thing about humanity, right? We humanity is to love. That's that is what humanity is. And over time, we learn how to love each other better. Mm-hmm. And we real um, and we recognize as a culture, not us because we weren't born yet, but our but the culture recognized, hey, what's going on here is not right. We need to fix this. And it was a slow process. There was a lot of learning along the way, and I feel like the abortion should be approached the same way. The best way to stop abortion is to be Christians and to Mm -hmm. love each other and to love our neighbor, you know, no matter what their beliefs are. Mm -hmm. Um, And, uh, you know, and try to make because if we try and force through stalling constitutional processes and by abusing institutions of the U.S. government, then it's pretty much it's pretty much artificial. What will happen is the pendulum will just swing back the next way. It won't be long probably before the Democrats uh, code, uh, codify a piece of legislation that is similar to Roe versus Wade. Um, that that will probably happen, I assume, within the next eight to ten years, and then we'll be right back where we started because there, because the solution to the abortion dilemma was not an organic one. Jason, I don't okay. mean to put you on the spot. But- one quick one here, uh, Rosie. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I mean, Jason, you know me. I, it's going to sound like I'm putting you on the spot, though. I'm fine. If I had a microphone and I was doing one of them man on the street things or a person on the street things, and I came to you and said, Are you pro life or pro choice? How would you answer that? I walk the royal path. So, theologically, I'm certainly pro life. Like I said, mm-hmm. I would oppose okay. abortion in mm-hmm. every single possible circumstance i do not mm-hmm. believe in exceptions for rape i do not believe in exceptions mm-hmm. for incest i do not believe in exceptions for the save the life of the mother mm-hmm. um i don't believe in any of it but at the same time mm-hmm. i understand that not everyone in this country agrees with me and i do want them to have the rights and the freedom and the ability to make their own mm-hmm. decision and then if we all come together as a nation and decide mm-hmm. it should be otherwise then mm-hmm. that's something else okay um i hear where you're coming from and uh that's a good argument, Jason. And I would also like to say that in order to even say that a fetus is not human is heresy. Um, uh, if you're talking well, about, I, I, I think you can prove that scientifically as well. But well, there's so, better scientific evidence, you know, that fetuses, you know, have more human. They have more human traits than we previously thought, right? Uh, hmm. But the, even the, even the science aside, you if you say that that the fetus is not human, you are implicitly, and people don't always know this when they say it. Mm-hmm. So I'm not condemning them, but you're basically denying the incarnation of Christ. Uh, bingo. I was going to bring that up. Bingo. You're reading my mind. You have a gift, Jason. You're yeah. Right. Believers, believers. Sure. Yeah. But I mean, there are people that deny that anyway. But um, the question that I had asked was, you know, that should we not have a voice in it? You know, should we not be speaking for those who can't speak for themselves? You can speak. You know, for- a lot of mothers. 
you can Hold on, but them. a lot. Go on. Sorry. Um, you know, there are a lot of mothers who don't like, I mean, you, you, I know we've had a little back and forth on, on our um, private messenger about this, but um, you know, I have had that experience and um, you know, if I would have known the resources available to me, it probably would have been a no brainer. It was like so many doors were open. I was told, you know, a lot of, a lot of the choices that I made, and I'm not saying that I'm not accountable for what the choices I made, mm -hmm. but they, because number one of the indoctrination of the culture we live in and number two, um, well, there's more than number two, three, four, five, but you know, somebody offered to hear, I'll take you there. I'll pay for it. If you, if you, um, if you carry this baby out, you're going to be attached to that father for the rest of your life. Da, 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 da. I had nobody swaying on the other side to educate me on all the resources that had been available to me at that time. Right. So, you know, as someone who has gone through it, who has grieved over it, who has suffered depression from it, you know, because like, mm. they don't tell you about all the, the negative experience that you're going to have. I committed murder. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't really set in until it's done mm -hmm. because of the culture, because of the indoctrination, the brainwashing that the culture does. And right. I was not a follower of Christ at that time. I know part of the secular world lost, bobbing up and down, looking mm -hmm. for my blessed hope. You know, so all I had was this world. And, yes. you know, if, if there were like, if I feel like if, because of the convictions I have through the experience, if I don't, if I don't, it was just like you're saying, so I can appreciate that you're, you're saying, you know, I'm pro-life, uh, that you're pro-life, but if, if I don't come out and, and say, I get into a, a conversation with somebody, if, if I'm not knowing the resources, if I'm not knowing the truths that I can uh, have a logical discussion, a back and forth with someone who might, you know, God might bring into my, you know, open a door for me to help somebody else do the right thing, as opposed to what I had to deal with after, then I don't feel like I'm, I'm a good advocate for the kingdom of heaven. You know, it's sort of like, you know, a number one, allowing someone, allowing one of these little ones to stumble who loves me. Um, you know, that can be argued depending on case by case basis. Mm -hmm. Another one is, you know, uh, he who, um, you know, relaxes one of the least of these commandments will be called least in the, ha the, the kingdom of heaven. Um, those kinds of things really play on the fact that, no, we need to stand on what is true. We need to stand on what is right. And because we are, you know, productive members of the society, we live in this culture, we are here for a purpose, we are the salt that preserves and, and helps slow down the decay of the culture where Christ says that, um, you know, the, the things are, people are going to whack it at colder and colder and colder. Um, if, if I don't, if I don't speak my voice on what my Christian uh convictions are and they are rooted in love and compassion especially for those who cannot speak for themselves and defend themselves then I don't feel like I am I feel like I would be more ashamed of myself for not doing that because I know that the all-knowing all-present and all-powerful God has always got an eye on me and if if I just turn my, if I just turn away from this, what that I'm, I'm not being salt. And if, mm -hmm. if I'm not being salt, then what good is salt? But, to, you know, if it's watered down too much, then to be just thrown out and, and trampled underfoot. So there's a lot that, you know, that goes into if I'm, if I'm a taxpayer, if I'm a person uh, registered to vote, I think that, you know, those things, we are here for a reason and for a season. And we should be standing on um, you know, what's right, whether or not, I mean, we're not going to change the world per se, you know, it's, it's not going to be, everyone's going to become a Christian. I don't disagree that that is the solution. That's absolutely the solution, but I can't be the Holy spirit in someone else's life, but I can be a vessel for the Holy spirit to use in number one, the culture and in somebody else's life 
that I might be engaging with. I'm not just going to say, oh, well, that's your choice. You know, that's your truth. And that's true for you. I, I don't think that if it was me and I'm supposed to love my neighbor as myself, that's not what I would want someone to do. I would want someone to tell me the truth. You're going to have to, it, you know, if you don't repent and I'm not going to, I'm not saying it this way to the individual, but just to flat out, cut out the fat, uh, you know, compassion and sincerity. It, it, it takes a lot longer than just what I'm going to spit out here. But, you know, if I'm not going to try to convince you to that, this is wrong. This is morally that God, God hates this. You know, what's he hate hands that spill innocent blood. What is abortion? But that, that spills innocent blood. If I'm not telling people truth in love, then I'm not being who I'm called to be. Does that make sense? Yes. So I think it's really important that we frame this again because I feel like it went off the rails a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, what I am saying, <laughs> what I am saying, is not that you shouldn't speak out or that you shouldn't talk to people about your conventions or the conv convictions or that we cannot voice our position on abortion, which is what we're doing now. What I'm saying right. is you should not abuse the institutions of the U.S. government in order to try and facilitate some sort of change in your nation that re that re um, that results in having your theology and your beliefs pushed on other people. That's what I'm against. And that's what a lot of evangelical okay. fundamentalist evangelicals See, do. That, and I'll give you the that example. That confuses me. That yeah. confuses me. So I'll give you an example. OK, in the U.S. Constitution, you have. Three branches. You know what they are probably. The executive branch, the legislative branch, and the judicial branch, okay? Um, so what happened was is that about 20 late um, – whenever uh, Donald Trump won the 2016 presidential election, there was what we call a lame duck section mm -hmm. um, where uh, you have you know some a lot of the people that were in Congress are going to be voted out – were voted out in the election. So Mitch McConnell – um, the the uh, Senate Majority Leader at the time came out and said, "We have never allowed a president to appoint a judicial a a a, 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 a Supreme Court nominee and had a hearing during a, a lame duck session. So because Barack Obama's party lost the election, the Democratic Party lost the election, uh, and because he appointed Merrick Garland to be the next Supreme Court justice." We are not going to have hearings about the about the nomination of Merrick Garland. So what happened was was Mitch McConnell allowed the the nomination to expire. You have so much time to have a hearing, or else the nomination expires. Mm -hmm. um, and what happened was that whenever the, it expired, Donald Trump appointed uh, Neil Gorsuch, I believe it was, to be the new Supreme Court nominee. Uh, Neil Gorsuch is pro-life. Okay, mm -hmm. Merrick Garland was not. So they said so the Republicans immediately have hearings for Neil Gorsuch, and they vote, and Neil Gorsuch gets on the Supreme Court. Well, fast forward to when Donald Trump lost the 2020 election to Joe Biden. What happened was was Mitch McConnell refused <laughs> to uh, instead of refusing to have. A hearing like he did with Barack Obama when he, when Barack Obama was president, whenever Trump appointed Amy Coney Barrett to the Supreme Court, um, whenever Ruth Bader Ginsburg died, instead of Mitch McConnell being consistent in his principles, he said he said he said he says we're going to get an Amy Coney Barrett through the, mm -hmm. the nomination process as soon as possible. Total double right. standard. Mm -hmm. And that's an example of people that have a religious motive. Of using, wait, wait, wait. Uh, what? Go back like two sentences. You said that uh, Donald Trump? Donald Trump lost to Joe Biden in the 2020 election. And, right. and, and, the, and the Mitch McConnell's logic whenever Barack Obama's party lost, when Hillary Clinton lost to Donald Trump, was since this is a lame duck session and since Barack Obama lost, we're not going to have a hearing. We're going to let Do Donald Trump appoint a nominee. But Donald Trump lost to Joe Biden. So if Mitch McConnell were consistent, he would say, we're not going to have hearings on Amy Coney Barrett that Donald Trump uh, appointed because Donald Trump lost the election. We'll let Joe Biden appoint someone instead. He didn't do that. Instead, he rushed Amy Coney Barrett through to sure. try and get as big of a majority in the Supreme Court as possible before Joe Biden became president. Yes, he did. 
And so what did um, that do? Huh? Go- what did that do? It allowed for an, it allowed for two extra Supreme Court justices to sit in the Supreme Court that should not have been there. Okay, and, so that's and, what made it, and that's Democrat, what led. Correct? That's one of the things that led to the overturning of Roe versus Wade because you had this really big pro-life conservative majority in the Supreme Court. But the problem is, is that the majority was not legitimate because of the rules that Mitch McConnell broke. Um, so when I say abusing the institutions of the United States government, uh, 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 let, let, let's be accurate, Jason. Um, I'm, I'm hearing what you say and agree with a lot of it. Um, he didn't break any written laws or any, he broke tradition. Go ahead. Well, there's a procedure laid out in the constitution and he stopped it. And there was nothing in the constitution that said he could, so you could turn that around. And yeah, say you, that you could, you, know, you could. Yeah. Anyway, so there's, I, so there's no one ever asked the question. Hey, can we stall Supreme Court nominations for political purposes? I don't think the founding fathers would approve. Um, you well, know. Yeah. Um, but. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but anyway, uh, so that's what I'm talking about: abusing institutions of the U.S. government to try and push, even if it's the right thing, even if abortion is wrong, we shouldn't go around and and abuse the U.S. government. In order to try and, and and force people to you know by by rule of law to navigate personal situations in the same way that maybe like an evangelical Christian. Okay, would. that's what I'm saying. So here's a question: Is that was that person who did that? Was he a Christian? Mitch McConnell. I suppose. That, I mean, you're saying that that led to the overturning of Roe versus Wade. So Mitch McConnell, uh, as far as I know, he's I think Correct. he's a Protestant of some sort. I don't know what denomination he's in, but I think he identifies. <clears> as <throat> it's hard uh, to get elected as a Republican unless you identify as Christian anyway. OK, he, he does identify as a okay. Protestant. You're right. I can't think of the denomination. OK, so I, I know for a fact so, Mitch McConnell identifies as Protestant. OK, I'm sorry. Crazy Where's Stephen? No, 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 no. <laughs> so another question. Hold on. I'm getting somewhere with this. Stephen's gone. Um, but you you said earlier that you believe that so, that God is sovereign over everything. I don't believe that God controls man's choices. I, I didn't say anything about sovereignty today. That Here. I no, he's he asked uh, Stephen asked if if he believed in in sovereignty. You know that that he's still at work actively in. Oh Christian well, yeah, life. that's a different so question. Then if God controls Christian, everything. He doesn't. Right. The Holy Spirit is actively working in a person who yeah. is placed in that governmental position um, in order to um, create a delay. The Holy Spirit would not so you, encourage someone to sin in order to bring about a greater change. How is that a sin? How is it a sin? Because you took an oath of office to the Constitution that, that you would protect it and then you didn't do it. Okay, but this that's like man's tradition versus what God's sovereign moral law is. I don't think it's a, well, so, no, no, God is not, even, God is never, ever, even ever. David. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, you were just what talking, happened? so I stopped. Oh, I stopped because you were talking. Um, because even even in the Old Testament, David went in and it was not lawful for them to eat of the the bread. But, you know, God in his compassion and his mercy, um, you know, he 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 wasn't um, chastised for that. And Jesus made a spectacle of himself and he duped the devil into killing him. And took glory for it. And so we're the, supposed to be salt and light. So in the first situation, yeah, God didn't punish, but God's also not a legalist. Even a lot of evangelicals are, but God's not a legalist. Um, so yeah, God will have mercy when he has mercy, sure. But that doesn't make that doesn't make it right. And it doesn't mean that David ought to have done what he did. Um, and so it's the same with okay, Mitch McConnell. Okay, but you just said that God's not a legalist. No, he's not a legalist. But you're saying that God's not a legalist. I feel like so, you're putting but, words but in my mouth. But what you're doing so, is you're putting so, a... Okay, well, I'm trying to understand. It just seems like, to me, 
if if God's sovereign will is working in a person who is in a position, he might be the one that's holding him back from doing something. That is not our call to make. You're, you're equating our reading eyes. a scripture with reading us into a situation and saying what God's will was and what God was doing in there, and we don't know. No, no, no. I'm saying I'm. I'm what I'm saying is it's possible. I'm not saying that it is well, I'm not, it doesn't matter I'm not making a dogmatic not. statement. It's, it's not we should not be trying to use that as justification no. for deception and for saying a bad a bad look for Christism in order, you know, in order to, you know, I, I just don't agree with that at all. How but I'm just trying to understand how it was immoral for him to be I mean, I guess what you're saying is he was inconsistent. Well, not only inconsistent, but he took an oath to protect the Constitution, and he did not do that. So, uh, but this is well, not. Well, maybe his interpretation is, is different. What I'm saying is, look at the big picture and look at how people are viewing Christianity in the light of this. This is not something where greater good was done. In fact, a lot more babies are probably going to die because this happened. Um, you know, so because now people are much less trusting of Christians than what they were before. Because of this, this is the reason why the Democrats did so well in the mid. In I the don't understand. Was because of Roe versus Wayne. You know that was a big issue for them when understand. they showed up to vote. What's that? I'm sorry, I, I couldn't hear you. Thought there was somebody else she talking. Said, she, I Rosie said I don't she understand. does not understand. Because I am looking at the bigger picture, but. I'm not looking at the logistics. You're, you're thinking of, of the babies, but you're also not thinking of the that, people that are looking on the situation too. They're, they're also important. And they're also for a lot of women that have, that are glad that they didn't get an abortion or regret that have abortion. There are other women that blame evangelical Christianity for them being quote unquote forced to have a baby. Blessed so, are those who are blame. persecuted for my name's sake. What's that? Blessed are those who are persecuted. I said, blessed are those who are persecuted for my namesake. But even a heretic you know? use that as justification. You see what I'm saying? It's it's an ambiguous thing. No. What's ambiguous? What does it mean to be persecuted for his namesake? Are we talking about someone who's part of the Holy Apostolic Catholic Church? Or are we talking about a Mormon that may quote the same verse? You said he was Protestant. Yeah, Mitch McConnell's process, a, I'm using that example, the way that you're using that verse, a heretic could use it the exact same way that you're using it. Okay, but I'm trying to use it in context from 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 for this specific situation from, a, you know, my particular worldview. So I don't think that the two equate. I mean, comparing a Mormon to a Protestant, um, that's apples and oranges. Well, I would also say so, comparing an Orthodox Christian to a Protestant would be I mean, apples and oranges. I think they're just different varieties of apples. You know, you have you have uh, Granny Smith and you have Envy's and you have Fuji's. I, I, I disagree with that comparison. Well, there's only one holy Catholic and apostolic church. That's what Jesus taught. That's what the apostles taught. And that's what their disciples taught. So I don't I don't consider Protestants okay. to be part of that. Not to say, of course, that Protestants don't receive any grace from God whatsoever. I don't believe that. But I'm just saying, you know, if we're going to if we're going to start making these. Are you saying it's a salvation issue? Are you saying that 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 a person is not saved unless they are an Eastern Orthodox Catholic? Well, we're talking about different definitions. Of salvation I think that's a here. slippery slope. Yeah, we're talking about different uh, definitions. Go ahead, Jason. Uh, we are talking about different salvation. Go ahead, Jason. Yeah, so the, the, the Orthodox view of salvation is a lot <laughs> different than the evangelical fundamentalist view that we that we typically hear here in the West. The Orthodox view of salvation has to do more with, with – it's more of a cosmic gospel, really. It's not about whether or not you go to heaven. It's also about becoming more like God. Um. So – and also right. – you know, it's also more, yeah. So it's about, about becoming more godlike or Christ-like, as you would say. Um, when evangelicals talk about things being a salvation issue, they're thinking about whether or not, um, you know, the person's going to heaven. That's not how the Orthodox Church thinks about salvation. Right. Um, so when you ask that question, you're asking me a question from from your process standpoint. 
according to the idea of whether someone will quote unquote go to heaven or not, no, I don't consider it a salvation issue. I believe that Protestants can go to heaven. I believe that people that aren't even identifying as Christian go to heaven. Aiden can go to heaven for all I know. Only God's the judge of that. Mm. Um, you know, so um, so I don't look at okay. it in that way. But what I but it is a salvation issue in this in the sense that if you are if you're a part of the Protestant church, you're not going to receive the same portion of grace that you would receive, say, from Holy Communion in the Eastern Orthodox Church. And in that sense, it would be a salvation issue. Why? Because Jesus established one church and the walls of the church is his body and the mode of the church is his blood. Ignatius of Antioch made that very clear when he talked about people with heterodox opinions that did not, that abstain from the Eucharist. Um, the church is a sacramental institute that's been around for 2,000 years. We can historically show that our bishops have apostolic succession back to the apostles. Protestants and anyone else cannot show the same thing. Historically, the Eastern Orthodox Church is a one holy Catholic apostolic church. Um, Protestantism is only about 500 years old at this point. Um, so when, when you see something new here okay. that says, hey, we're this, we, we are the revival of this ancient religion, but you see no apostolic con- uh, connection to it, then I find that suspect. So to backtrack that to the original point, whenever you say they're persecuted for my namesake, the question is, what's the namesake? And I feel like a lot of people use that verse in a very arbitrary way to justify their political views, such as, for example, with Mitch McConnell and trying to support what he did, which was totally wrong. Well, yeah, I, I guess. I don't know. I, I have no idea. You know, I mean for for them to you know crucify christ on the cross was completely wrong and yet god knew what they were going to do all ahead of time sure but that's revealed to us in the scriptures that's something that's been directly revealed to us through the apostles and through right but 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 we don't know the secret things of god and if God is sovereign and powerful and all-knowing, we don't know why he allows certain things to happen. Well, so, let's talk about you know, we... and, and our war is not with flesh and blood. And what you're doing is you're like criticizing an individual rather than, you know, there is this hemisphere of spirituality that we, we are not privy to. So we don't understand all the logistics that God understands. So, so this is interesting for, here because you know, you're sort of it, even it, you know I, so you're sort of using your my argument against me. That's good because I want to show where I'm consistent and you're not being consistent. Um so the okay. um so we do let's talk about what we do know. We do know what Jesus and the apostles taught. We do know historically how the Christian church has historically treated people that do not agree with them. Whenever even when Constantine was emperor and whenever Rome became a Christian nation. We still allowed pagans to practice their religion. It's true. In Rome. Okay. So we didn't stop them. The evangelicals okay. want to stop them. We didn't stop them. Um, and I view that the same way with abortion. You know, if people decide to get abortions, I cannot control that. Um, mm-hmm. I want to do everything I can right. to have as little obstacles as possible between the people that don't believe. Little and what? Christianity. Yeah, I want as little obstacles as possible. Whenever you go and you start trying to control people's lives, people don't like that. Look at history. Look at what happens whenever you try and control people's lives. Revolutions happen and stuff like that. That's how the United States, you know, became a thing eventually. Um, so I so in that because of that, and because I know historically how the church is treated, even from early times within hundreds of years of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. Um, that's, that's the, that's my model for how we should treat others who don't agree with us is that. So my view, whenever I say, whenever I look at Mitch McConnell and I say what he's doing is not right, I'm looking at the history of the church and how they handled people that did not agree with them and did not practice life the same way that they did. So I'm not being inconsistent here. You can go ahead. I don't, I don't think I am either. I just think we have two different points of view. Um, you know, that, okay. The model that you, you said that, what was your model? 
I love that the history of what the life, Jesus, burial, and resurrection. Yeah, I, I look at what Jesus and the apostles taught. The life. And, and right, but God, Jesus didn't go around just loving and loving everybody. He told the truth. Yeah, he, he did. Out on truth. You know, yeah, he, he did. Called, he sure the legalists did. Were, you know, called them hypocrites. Loving and, on them. Yeah, at the same time. I mean, yeah. it wasn't done in the Well, life, it wasn't at the know. same time. It was sometimes so, criticism comes out of love, too. <clears throat> not just one thing. Yeah, right. Okay, so in order to um, trying to grasp my my thoughts here, yeah, I don't blame you. It's oh, I know what I know where I was going. I know where I was going. I know where I was going with it. Okay, um, okay. Shoot, I had it and then it went away. You guys were like, "No, it's okay. Take your time." And I'm like, "Oh, okay." Um, it's like it went around the record player and then it went around again. Um, well, let's get it. Re start. Refresh my memory just on the highlights of, of like the the little bits that you were just talking about, and I I know I'll remember if 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 it comes up in that. Um, Jason. Okay, I, I didn't know if you were about Hello? to say something else. I'm here. <laughs> Jason. No, I, I want to. I'm trying to. I, I'm asking you to help me to remember mm -hmm. the context because it kind of it kind of threw me um, back that you said that I was using your argument against you, and that was yeah. surprising to me. So it sort of like made me sort of like step back and go, "Wait, did I do that? I wasn't trying to. I'm just trying to have a logical conversation." Yeah, well, and I'm so just saying when you said that, I was sort of like using my flow of reasoning and, and, and coming to a different conclusion. So that's what I was talking about. So when I said oh, I remember. Book, okay, okay. So wait, wait, wait. I got it. I got it. I got it. Go okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, so um, getting other people to do what you think is right. That's not what I'm trying to say. I'm not. I'm not trying to say that we should make people not do those things. You know, they're going to do what they're going to do. You know, and and if they come to Christ, there's you know there's salvation in that. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is. To be salt and light is to preserve the the um, uh, slow down the decay, and that's all I'm I'm just trying to say that you know I for them to commit an abortion is to commit murder. Excuse me, I'm trying to in excuse me, goodness gracious. In my view, with compassion. You know, I should try to reason with a, another human being as to, uh, you know, that that isn't right. But ultimately, it's between them and God. But I do believe that we should be standing for what we believe to be true. And I'm speculating. I'm trying to give him the benefit of the doubt because I know you're you're drawing him this picture. How do you know that your your picture isn't a straw man? Because we don't know the full heart and intentions. Uh, uh, motives behind why he did what he did. It sounds like you're painting his person, which I have no clue. I don't get into politics at all. But it's interesting that you did say that he's Protestant or he's a believer, so he's a Christian and he's trying to choose to do the right thing. And granted, okay, maybe there is some of that um, where he tried to manipulate the system. I don't know. Um, it sounds plausible. But in the same, you know, on the same, uh, on the other side of the coin, you know, God permits things to happen for a reason. And I'm just saying that, you know, we should extend the same amount of grace, especially to believers, as um, Christ has extended to us through his crucifixion. And, you know, that's, that's how we were forgiven. And to say you know, to, to say to this individual, or, you know, he shouldn't have done that because it was, you know, not within the way that things have always been done. Is that correct? I mean, is, you know, I don't mean to put words in your mouth. I'm just trying to kind of what's coming out of me is my, what I am trying, I'm hearing from you and processing it and trying to relay it back to you. So if I misrepresent you, I'm not trying to do that at all. I'm just trying to give feedback for what I am hearing and comprehending. Okay. So when I say, you know, when you're saying that, you know, he shouldn't have done that, that that was not a moral thing to do. 
And just because lives are saved from it, um, it, you know, it's doing the wrong way because it's making Christianity look bad. Well, Christianity doesn't need any help in that because the gospel is offensive, period. You know, because we want to do whatever we want to do and we don't want to face any consequences for it. And we certainly don't want un any any God trying to tell us that what we're doing is wrong. I mean, you can see the moral decay in the culture for crying out loud. People are rejecting the fact that 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 they're even human anymore. I mean, the the, the delusion is prevalent in, in our culture that your truth, you believe whatever you want to believe and and. And, and we are here supposed to be fighting against that as the fight, the good fight. And if, you know, all, all Roe versus Wade did was turn it back to the states where the states can decide. They took it out of the government hand and gave it to each state and says, you decide whether or not you want abortion to be legal or not. And, where, where you know, they twisted all. that in the first place. Yeah. And, you know, that is not what the left is, from my understanding, that's not what the left is representing it. The left is representing it as this huge, huge is racist that now all oh, boy, we can't have abortions anymore. I'm so sad, you know, that I can't kill my baby so I can have a better life. I mean, you're just sacrificing a life on the altar of self. And that's what our culture teaches us. And that's what I was saying when, when people were telling me, you're going to be stuck to that person, that, that, that father for the rest of your life. If you have this baby here, I will pay for it. I will drive you there. I will pick you up, you know, and, and, and the evolution in it that is indoctrinated into our children this decade after decade after decade. Well, if we're just, you know, balls of meat rolling around in the universe, you know, what you're saying is that, that people who have a, uh, you know, a fire or a flame to stand on this, they shouldn't be doing that. But it's God who instills those convictions and fuels those those fires. It's often the things that we go through that God uses and flips them around for his glory. So I just think that in, in you know, me looking at the bigger picture, in, in a different worldview than what you have. I'm not, I'm not like trying to throw the baby out with the bathwater or say anything against you personally. I'm just saying that my perception of that is different. I'm like, well, there's good that went, but there's good that came out of this. And there, think of about all the, the babies in the wombs that have not been ripped out of their mother's wombs because of this. I mean, if, if it makes Christianity look bad to save lives, I think people are looking at it the wrong way. So I, there's so much there. I can't respond to all that because it's just too much. But I'll say a few things. <laughs> I'm sorry. So the first okay. thing is, well, it's fine. I say it a lot I'm too. sorry. It's all good. But um, I, I have my own monologues too. Um, sometimes among a council of myself. No, I'm just kidding. But um, monologues. Count, like multiple personalities, you know, like a that just came out of nowhere. Right? That's, that's my brand of humor. Yeah, so. I've never actually spoken any of that. So anyway, so those are just thoughts that were not really formulated or thought through. Go ahead. So anyway, um, so You're when good. Mr. Thompson, he's been in office since 1985. That's a year before I was born. Had a lot of time to look at this guy. Who? Um. And he's always been concerned. Oh, the one we're talking about, the one in question. Hmm. Well, he runs it. Yeah, the one in question. He's right. always run on trying to uphold evangelical conservative values in the Senate. That's how he's been able to stay in power for so long because Kentucky is extremely conservative and extremely evangelical. If you go in the most evangelical churches, when they talk about ending abortion, they're not talking about giving it back to the states. They're talking about ending it. Period. That's what they want. That's not enough for them. Um. So, um, yes, Roe versus Wade gave it back to the states. That's true. And uh, but the evangelicals want more than that. They want to get rid of it in, in total. Um, my problem with Ro with overturning Roe versus Wade is that the way that the two Supreme Court justices that were that were integral to that decision. Um, the way the way they were put in there was not a way that was legitimate. It was not the way the Constitution was meant to work. And it was used and abused to try and get Roe versus Wade overturned. Um, 
I will say that in the rolling of Roe versus Wade, what they said was Henry Blackman, the Justice Harry Blackman was the one who wrote the, the majority opinion for Roe versus Wade. He said it is not he said something akin to it is not my opinion that the court can decide on the matters of whether or not a fetus is human or on the or basically on theological matters uh, whenever philosophers and theologians can't agree on it either. Well, a bo- I'm sure we all know this, but I want to make sure everyone okay. truly knows it. Roe versus Wade was never decided. It was never decided. Anyway, go on. Well, it was it was decided in the Supreme Court. So, because Henry Blackman is the one who wrote the majority opinion on it, so there was a there was a resolution to the case. Can well, I can I ask you a quick question and let you continue? Uh-huh. Um, you you mentioned that um, the unborn fetus is not covered in the institution. The Constitution. Um, but is that an interpretation? Yeah, or yeah, I think so. Is that based on the fact that um, the human being's location? Well, you you mean you mean the um, we mean like be, be inside the woman instead of outside? Yeah. No, I mean it's, it's a human being. That. It has it's not, specific, no, it's not based on that. Or, you know. Okay, because I'll tell you why. I'd like to see that. what it is you're referring to. Yeah, because I've, I, huh? Yeah, I can tell you. So, the way that they did it, what the way most most of the colonies did it after the um, you know, with the after like the the, the Declaration of Independence and and the the um, you know, and the Articles of Confederation and then the Constitution that came after that, the way they usually did this was and this and this is to st- demonstrate that it wasn't because of the location of of the fetus okay it's not because the the baby was inside the mother what they said usually in most states was that when the mother felt a quickening then and that means a kick in the belly okay uh once that that quickening happens it's too late to do an abortion that's what they that's what most of the states did and that was done at the time of the Constitution. So much like how I approach Scripture, where I look at the Scripture itself, and then I look at how it's historically understood, I look at the Constitution, and then I look at how it was it was historically understood among the states. Um. So so that's so that's how I know, you know, like what that the Constitution does not cover fetuses, because even the founding fathers and the contemporaries, you know, because there was no dispute over whether or not the states could allow abortion. I know that they did not that they uh, would do not interpret the, the U.S. Constitution in the same way that a lot of our evangelical fundamentalist friends do today. Right. See, and that's what I was getting ready to ask you is that isn't that a, a, a I want to say the word hang up, but it's, it's not really a, a, a very a good enough word for it. But does that not. Um, is it not an issue of the way it's interpreted? Well, it is an issue, but just like how I look at the Bible and interpreting because, that, right? Because we have like 133,000 Protestant denominations out there right now. Um, I look at the Bible and I look at the history of how it's been understood among the people that have succession back to the apostles. Just the same, I look at with the Constitution. So I look hermeneutics. At, Hermen- you can hermeneutic. call it a hermeneutic. Um, I'd say this is a bit wider than a hermeneutic. Okay. Usually her, the, big, the big emphasis on hermeneutics is usually more of a Protestant thing. It, um, well, yeah, but uh, I've, it, there is a, bright, a broader definition of it. I had to look the word up um, uh, several weeks ago. and it, it I mean, there is a hermeneutic in the Orthodox Church, Church but, but the Protestants, because they don't have the history and the pedigree, you know, the historical pedigree, they have to sort of recreate what Scripture originally meant because they believed it was lost at some point with the Roman Catholic Church. Whereas the Orthodox Christians, you know, we've always had Maybe. the tradition, so we don't feel this need to have all of this, like how to interpret the Bible, like explained out from A to Z, because we already have the understanding passed down throughout the ages. So we don't focus on, on hermeneutics as much yeah. as like, you know, some of our Protestant friends might. I don't know. It's just the word that I I, I have been exposed to that uh, that helps understand the Bible in its original context. So well, however we got there, we still got there. 
<laughs> you know, we didn't, we weren't born into Christianity. We weren't, you know, born believers, you know. Well, I'm just saying, um, like, in I that, in that respect, I would encourage anyone that's seeking God to also look at the history surrounding the Bible and how it's understood instead of just reading the Bible or like looking at a systematic theology book or something. The tribe, yeah. You know, oh, no. Yeah. That's what a lot of people do. Yeah. And, um, yeah, you know, I don't do history. that, but yeah, I I do know that they do that. But but history is like is a super important I, part of the sermon. Okay, but in the here and yet again, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna you know circle back around to the whole argument with um with slavery just because you know it was it was legal mm -hmm. doesn't make it right, and therefore you know yeah. that. Um, you know, people were slaves and because I guess you said that they believed that, um, that, um, black people were not human. Well, mm. that's the same argument they're making for children, children inside the womb is that, um, they're not human until they're born or, and then they'll say, or, you know, try and make another argument. Well, they're not, unless they can sustain life on their own. I mean, you know, I can leave my five-year-old at home and just abandon him and he'll die. I mean, at what point does it, I mean, where does the insanity end? So this is why I said at the beginning of this discussion that we need to aim for an organic transition as Christians to where the okay. whole country, like they I, saw with slavery, sees that abortion is immoral and it should not be done. Um, rather than trying to expedite it by trying to abuse governmental institutions in order to get our way. Um, Rosie, this is a good. Good, this is a good book. But do they not work in tandem? What do you mean? Well, I mean, because I, I believe that so that God's hand is in everything, and then you have people who are trying to share their faith in order, uh, in hopes that they'll receive a love of the truth and therefore shall be saved. Um, well, sharing the and faith is in, one thing, but, but, same, but abusing government institutions is another. Okay, but it was one, and I'm not justifying. Like, like I said, I don't know what the guy's heart was, and I'm, I, I hope you understand that that's not what I'm saying when I say this because it might come off sounding that way. But you know, this person operating out of his own convictions, whether right or wrong in the in the way that he did what he did, is still a good thing. And and I think it's you know there's. And, you know, no, I'm not I'm not trying to offend you or no, Jason, by saying this, but it sounds like you're getting more offended on the fact that um, like this makes Christianity look uh, look bad as opposed to doing the right thing, because I don't think that I, I mean, and I hear what you said about like I actually use the word Protestants, Protestants. That's not enough. They want to. um, um you know, they want it to be gone forever. Uh, and, and well, I mean, naturally, if you have the Holy Spirit living inside you with a clean heart, that seems like a natural uh, posture to have. And yet, so realistically, in the culture that we live in, um, that doesn't seem likely, in my opinion. That it would be a you know completely abolished. That just said that that doesn't seem like that. it's going to be we realistic. Had However, I, I still in the upper room and then Christianity spread throughout the world. Mm -hmm. And a pagan. That's culture, true, but you know this is only until the time of the Gentiles. Yeah, it could happen. It's not our place to say it can't happen. <laughs> I'm just saying it doesn't sound realistic. I mean, well, considering where the scriptures say that people are people are going to wax worse and worse. Um, we should expect that things are going to get worse and worse. And yet still, we should be, you know, light and salt, know that God is in control and, um, you know, still be fighting the good fight and, and upholding his moral ethics. I mean, you know, thou shalt not murder is a big one. Well, we have hold it in our own lives. We don't so, try to reverse and, people to do the same things that we do. That's the whole point of Again? my, that's what, that's my point with Mitch McConnell. Like I explained earlier, I can look at the history of the church and what did you say? how it taught about the government and what Mitch McConnell was doing is not what the church taught to do in governance. Okay. So what you're saying is, okay, correct me if I'm wrong. 
And again, I, when I'm speaking to you in general, I'm not meaning any offense anyway. I just, I really enjoy the conversation. I find it stimulating, but it sounds to me like the way you interpret them not getting involved and not trying to get the culture to do this or that, it, it sounds like you're saying, like he said, we'll just turn a blind eye to it. Well, no, because look at what happened. In the history of the world, look at what happened with Christianity. They took this approach, yes, but that doesn't mean there's no evangelism. They just treated people in a way that was loving. And because of that, Christianity spread throughout the world. It's not a, it's not passive to say that we that people that you know people who don't agree with us, you know, we allow them to make their own choices. I don't disagree with that. Yeah. Yeah. I so, don't. so yeah, you should still be loving. And, and evangelicalism hasn't done any such thing. And and one of the reasons what? why is because they keep to poking their noses in everybody's business. <laughs> well, I don't disagree that 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 can happen with some individuals. Sure. I mean, you know, I definitely would say that's fair. Um, and you know, I. I you know, just because something exists doesn't mean that you know, it's one thing to, you know, not be obnoxious about it, like jump up and down and have these these protests and stuff. I, I, I if that's the kind of stuff and I, I understand that that's just one caveat, one little element um, to what it is that I think that you disagree with as far as that goes. And I would agree with you. Um, but to, as a principle, just as a, you know, uh, a run of the mill, uh, person who is following my Lord and savior, <laughs> God, and, you know, um, that I should be, you know, like loving somebody is not affirming them. You know, you can say, I know that it's your choice and, you know, if it, if it grieves me, if your choice is grieving me, um, I'm not saying this to the individual, but it just as, as, an, um, if what they're doing, like in, in house argument here, not, not speaking to the individual, if what that person is doing grieves me, breaks my heart, how much more is it going to break God's heart? And so there's a compassion in that, especially with my particular um, um, walk that, you know, by the grace of God, you know, I, I it, it was what God used to bring about a conviction in me to bring to restore me to him was the abortion. It was the tipping of the scale for me. And for me to be able to share my testimony with someone and this, you know, I can, I can do it, I, but I'm not going to stand in the way of someone and jump up and down and chastise them. And, and, and I know that you're just, your your conversation, that what you're, the point that you were making was the person who delayed that, you know, this overturning came about to fruition, but I'm saying, like it is it's our responsibility to you know in a loving way yes love the pagan world you know i was once part of that pagan world you know i've been brought from death to life and you know it you know he says in scriptures you know some uh he talks about the different ways in which you would um try to save people you know be be used by him um you know save someone with fire, save um, someone, you know, compassion. There's different like caveats to how you would do this. And I'm saying that all of it is for the glory of God. Who are we to judge another person's servant? So I want to, I'm just going to say real, something. real quick. I want to hop in but, or I'll forget. It's quick. Yeah. Um, that might not be uh, fair. Jay, Jay, Jason I might recommend you like other books, fair, but, but I, I think Ro Rosie, I'm talking to you here. Um, if you want to learn um, or get an idea what the early church was like, 
uh jason might even suggest a different book but it's um it's written by a guy called eusebius i've, I've actually been listening to one what eusebius um i'll have to pull up my books he well, had me that's all right anyway you see me you see me uh was born around 260 ad uh he lived to 313 um it's one of it's one of the earliest historical accounts of the church so if you really want to get a flavor for the oh. early church um some people wouldn't recommend well i can't say they wouldn't recommend you see yes it wouldn't be the first on their on their list but it's called eusebius um it's a uh, oh the, the history ecclesiastical history but it really gives you a feel for what christianity was like back then and i don't think enough protestants and i'm not saying you for this is just for you, Rosie. But um, in general, I appreciate you making that clarification. Unlike our dear friend Jason, <laughs> um, just but I, I have to say Go this: uh, Protestants in general, I don't know if they're afraid to explore the early church of what they might find. Many of them uh, are. Afraid. I can tell from ex I can tell you from experience. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so um, anyway, that you see this sense, ecclesiastical though. history. It's an easy read, it really is, and it's not a real long read. Um, it looks like this. So I don't know if you can see. There you go. Is that that same one that you showed me just a second ago? Yeah, I was popping it up there, but you guys were uh, talking, so I took it down. But anyway, I think it's well-rounded. It, it would give you a real feel for the early church. So, all right, go ahead. I did. Well, sorry. Okay. I, I only interrupted it because I felt like, oh, we're, well, eventually we'll end this podcast and I'll go, oh, I forgot to tell Rosie about Eusebius. Pastor Chuck. Oh, you know my number. That's true. I, I would have had to call you at 3.30 in the morning or something. Anyway, I'd wake up and say, oh, I don't <laughs> care if she's asleep or not. I got to tell her about Eusebius. Pastor Chuck. Yes. I have two <laughs> questions for you. Uh, you ever? What is a reverend? What is a what? Reverend. Reverend. No, it's not orthodox. It's reverend. Just, it's not orthodox. It's just a title for. Uh, I, I, that's from. Actually, for Protestants use it. Uh, Catholics use it. Roman Catholics. It just means holy. Oh. Okay. So, the other thing is, uh, besides no pope, what's the difference between? Orthodox and Catholic. Oh boy. Besides the Pope? Yeah. Oh, that's a long oh, answer. That is a long answer. <laughs> you can answer it, Father Charles, or I'll answer it. Um go ahead. You seem so full of life and energy. <laughs> I'm reading yeah. all this stuff on the side. If if I need to energy act, you know I will, Jason. Go ahead. You might want to talk talk about the Philoquay. So whatever. Anyway, go on. So the first difference is that the Orthodox Church is better. That's the first yeah, difference. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So first off, uh, the Orthodox Church doesn't doesn't accept original sin, like right. the Roman Catholics do. Um, Good way to start. I like that. Why not start with original sin? I'm. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. The second thing is is that. Um, we know we're not, we don't believe in papal supremacy. I know you said besides the Pope, well, I'm going to address it anyway. In the Orthodox Church, we're an autocephalous church, meaning that all our bishops are equal in authority. Um, so uh, we don't, even though we believe that the Pope, that the Pope has the highest seat of honor because Peter was the first bishop of An in Antioch, and then later he became the Bishop of Rome, which Peter being the first bishop, him becoming the Bishop of Rome elevated the seat to a higher status of honor. And he was um, considered, considered the first of many. Go ahead. The first among equals, yep. yep. Uh, but it's like the Holy Theotokos is considered the first among equals in the, with the saints. Amen. So um, so while we believe that the Pope mm -hmm. has a special symbol, like, you know, when it was, when, it was in, when, the, when the Western Church was in communion with us, um, we do not believe he has supremacy over the other bishops and that he can boss the other bishops around. Um, yeah. So... 
that's a couple of differences there. Um, uh, Parker, another Parker, one is, you, is that wanna, our definition uh, of tradition I'm is sorry. different. But you want to say something, Father Charles? No, I was just going to. I thought you were searching for something. Said purgatory. I said purgatory, but no. Go on with tradition. Go ahead. No, we don't. Up. We don't believe no. in purgatory. That's true. Um, in fact, a lot of the afterlife and orthodoxy is shrouded in mystery. We don't exactly know what's going to happen when we die. Um, right. So, um, mm-hmm. unless a rapture happens, and we're wrong, <laughs> and the Orthodox Church was wrong about that all along. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> Anyway, um, so another thing, too, is, um, oh, what was I going to say? Oh, our definition of tradition. The Roman mm-hmm. Catholic Church seems to kind of separate the um, the Bible from, like, tradition. Yes. Um, we don't do that in orthodoxy. The Bible is part of holy tradition. We don't separate mm-hmm. the tradition from the Bible from every other parts of tradition. Um, so that's another difference. Oh. Uh, they're the big one. They're the big ones, Logan. They're the big ones. Mm-hmm. Yet, yet uh, we accept uh, each other's holy orders. Meaning, um, we accept uh, the ordination of each other's priests, bishops. Um, we recognize them that they are truly ordained. So, oh, even, I mean, there's a there's a lot of debate about that. Um, well, so, it, it depends on the church. They're yeah. all autonomous, so I know what you're going to say. And yeah. if you want to explain it, go ahead. But it's 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 left up, like you say, to the bishop. Man, that's not it's nothing about trouble. I don't even want to touch it. I know it's yeah. I know, I hear you. And these poor folks are saying, "What are they talking about? Why don't they want to touch it?" I'll I'll give one example. Okay, actually, I can give uh, both sides of the example. If if um. I don't know. Let's say I lived out in uh, wherever, and uh, I'm not a, a priest. Uh, of course, it wouldn't matter if I was a priest. Um, but I'm going to pretend I'm a layman, okay? I'll speed this up. And I live um, ten, uh, no, five miles, and I'm Roman Catholic, okay? I live five miles from an Orthodox church, okay? The next Roman Catholic church over is 25 miles. There's a big snowstorm. I can only make it to the Orthodox church. Now, here's what uh, Jason didn't want to touch. It's going to be up to that priest on the Orthodox uh, altar when uh, communion's given out. He may look straight, look at me straight in the eye and say, are you Orthodox? And I look up at him and of course I'm going to be honest and say, no, father, I'm a Roman Catholic. And he may say, I'm sorry, but I cannot administer communion to you. Now, this is where autonomy comes in. Or I walk up and it's again, it's an Orthodox priest. But they've been given permission by their bishop to administer Holy Communion to Roman Catholics if they are in need and under the circumstances. Now, I'm going to switch that around. You got an orth. Um, <clears throat> I'm sorry. Yeah, you have an Orthodox layman living out in out in the woods, and. Uh, the Catholic the Roman cat closest Roman Catholic Church is two miles, closest Orthodox Church is fifteen miles. It's a bad snowstorm again. Now the Orthodox enter he says, Well, I still you know, I'm going to church. He goes into the Roman Catholic Church. He is uh he can participate in everything. The Roman Catholic Church will not turn down an Orthodox for communion under no circumstances. Uh, unless of course they knew they were living in sin which they're not going to know but uh but if a orthodox lay person or priest whatever looks at the uh roman catholic priest that just consecrated the uh wine and water into the body but and blood of christ uh the roman catholic priest by order of the pope will not turn down an orthodox believer that makes sense, guys, or did I boggle that too much for you? 
In other words, the Roman Catholic Church is always going to give an Orthodox believer communion. I'm just sum summarizing this and making it easier. And one more time, a Roman Catholic priest will always give an Orthodox believer communion. You switch that around to an Orthodox priest, he will be under the orders of his bishop. And if his bishop said that, hey, if you come across a Roman Catholic, you still, they can participate in the service and all that, but they cannot receive uh, communion. Well, However, that, go uh, ahead. Under well, I, was just, I was just going to say the exact opposite. Or you may enter an Orthodox church that's a Roman Catholic, where the bishop said, if you encounter a Roman Catholic, you may give them communion go ahead jason so under bishop alexios which is my bishop here in pensacola he's in right. alexios is in is in atlanta uh and under him the orthodox priests are not allowed to give communion to roman, communion to roman catholics um in my jurisdiction uh-huh so okay well i'm glad you shared that with us but but anyway um I do want to say one thing about about evangelism and about like what we we're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, I can't address everything that you said, Rosie. Like I said, I, I we don't have, if we try and address everything, we both say we're going to be here forever. Um, but I want to emphasize that despite the church allowing paganism to be, uh, you know, pagans to do what they do under a, a Christian government, basically. That by the 14th century, paganism was all that but extinguished. Sure. And that Christianity had taken over the world, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Um, Is that what the point you were trying to make? Yeah. So so we, we accomplish a lot more whenever we're not trying to to get people to become to do Christian things or become Christian or to live in a way as, as an agreement with Christianity by trying to interfere in everybody else's business. It's more equitable to you know, to to just extinguish, try and focus on extinguishing sin from our own lives, than to try and extinguish it in the lives of others, especially when the other people don't view it as sin. Um, I'll give an example to you, just from from personal. So I've had a lot of I've had a, a lot of success with even with uh, evangelism since I became Orthodox. Mm -hmm. More success, I would say, than I had like in the past ten years. <laughs> so. Mm -hmm. um, but I work in a place where I have three gay co-workers. Mm -hmm. Three of them are gay. And it's a relatively small work environment. Mm -hmm. They found out very quickly without me saying anything that I'm a Christian. They figured it out real quick. And it was based on how I behaved in the workplace. And also, whenever we talked about things kind of political, like what sort of answers I gave, made it very obvious what I was. Right. Um. I've had a lot of very productive conversations with these coworkers. All well, one of them I haven't really had a chance to talk to, but two out of three of them I've had, I've had very productive conversations with, and very interesting conversations with them. One of them is getting really curious about Eastern Orthodoxy now. Cool. Um, as a result of those conversations, but I never at one time went out on my way to tell him I didn't agree with his lifestyle. Not one time. Mm -hmm. Now there was a time where he asked me. He said, uh, "He said, what do you think of gay people?" And I asked. What is there to think about them mm -hmm. as opposed to other people? Right. And he thought that was sort of a profound answer. He goes, well, do you agree with home with homosexual relationships? I said, no, I don't. I said, my response to that is not to have one. And that's as far as it goes. Mm -hmm. And he actually was very respectful of that answer. Uh, he right. didn't get upset or anything, but he asked me and I answered Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and we had more conversations about Christianity from that point. Of, you know, he feels comfortable talking to me because if I told him, well, I don't agree with it and I have a problem with your lifestyle, he wouldn't feel comfortable talking to me about the things that he talks to me about now. And he wouldn't no, be interested in no, orthodoxy right. like he is I now. Agree. I agree. I yeah. agree. Uh, but, but Rosie, unfortunately, probably missed that entire I, story. I might have to retell it. No, I can go back and watch it. I'm sorry. I just got back on and I got to go anyway because... I have a little one over here who it, we, our air conditioner isn't working. Everybody's hot and irritable. Oh. 
So, uh, and it's a curious, warm day today. I was going to say, just curious, uh, what's the temperature down there right now with the evening and all? Or, or how no, no, hot? Or how hot did it get today? What, what did it reach? It got fifty-eight in Pennsylvania. How about that? Where I live, it's seventy-nine. It's seventy-nine in the house. Wow. Air conditioner's been running and it's just not working. I gotta turn it off. Yeah. You can't even see that, but yeah. <laughs> All right, Rosie. Well, no, I don't know what on. what actually it got to. Thanks for coming on and co-hosting, and. Uh, <laughs> We'll have to do this again. That's for sure. Uh, well, and we'll all, we'll all have to watch the video. Yeah, that was fun. You know, make about us tomorrow. That's a truck. Oh, yes. It's 15 where I'm at. Uh, 15, he, he sent me a message. <laughs> oh. Very keen. He, yep. What, what he, he responded to me. To I read... I read. Um, he said, "It's up to you. It's up to you. It's up to you. I'm not. I didn't mean to say, please. You must no, no, tell no. us what he said. All right, go ahead. No, here, here, here. And yeah, after this, and I'll and I'll wrap it up. He, you, the, I sent him the same thing I sent you, right, about all the cussing and whatnot. Yes, <clears throat> yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And his his response was, his response was, yeah, but you hang out with." pedo enablers and i said that's news to me i don't know anyone in my home that does such things it's very interesting that you have almost a godlike insight to my life that i i didn't even know myself thank right. you for telling me so much about myself Woo. Mm. <laughs> Woo. i didn't know that <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I i can rest at peace now Oof. Are you saying and, and pedo repent and or whatever. Um, live in your house or are neighbors of yours? He says I hang out with like you, I, I I how is it that you know who I do and do not hang out with? But okay, it's a, a very interesting claim. Just keep piling on your transgressions. That's not me. You're going to answer to. <clears throat> Did he call me a pedo enabler? I was just trying to help him. Did he call me a pedo? Um, not that I'm aware of. Hello? Anyway, uh, I will uh, holler at y'all later. God I, bless. I, I, I gotta run. I had a guy, real quick, I had a guy in a live chat that said uh, that and I had to uh, call my lawyer. He recanted in 48 hours. Actually, less than that. Yeah, Wolf then. <laughs> yep. That's why I just wanted to know. I, I and hate to, I'd hate to sack my lawyer on Brad Kane. <laughs> yeah. um, for the record, I'm I'm not you know I'm not a huge fan of of kent and i don't really have anything personally against him i just he i don't gravitate to his content you know right. um oh but you're supposed yeah, to love everyone I see, I see what you're saying oh my goodness okay he's going to keep up with that <laughs> now he's going to keep up with i'll just say this he's going to keep up with the map pal uh Chris Jones, uh, 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 what's, I'm getting tired, the word I'm looking for. Uh, his agenda with them, that's not the word I want to use, though. Uh, whatever. He, he, scenario, he's, he's going to keep that alive. I don't, whatever. Okay, Rosie, uh, I'll be in touch. Or you can get Their agenda. And well, <laughs> yes. He, he continues to follow that agenda against them. And uh, He's not I don't get time, it. Yeah. That's another hour. A anyway, I'll be talking to you soon. God bless. God bless. Bye-bye. You know, Rosie? Pastor Chuck. Are we still going to yeah. stay live for Aiden or what's going on? What uh, what's he got? 15 minutes. Uh,
Yeah, it's almost 11 o'clock here. You've been going a while, so it's up to you. Yeah, I'm going to... Aiden, if you can hear me, I apologize, buddy. Uh, but I'm going to wrap this up. Um, but I look forward to you attending the next live stream, which I can't tell you when it'll be. Probably Friday. I know we're going to at least have one once a Friday. Um, every Friday I should have worded that. You can tell I'm getting tired. Um, in case you didn't, yeah, Jason, you were there when we discussed this. Friday was the good day for everyone. Well, for me, it's just going to pen, but I'll just pop in when I can, like I usually do. Yeah, but it, it, it as far as yeah, it was it was the best day for everyone. Let's put it that way. Yeah, popping in and all that kind of thing. Jason, so, yeah, bro. So, does anyone have any final thoughts before I wrap this up? I would like to talk to you for a few minutes after we get off. If you don't uh, mind. I gotcha. I gotcha. Okay. Uh, Jason. Yeah. Uh, that here's this famous actor that looks just like you. That's the guy <laughs> here you. Oh, here we go again. <laughs> Devin Sala. Yeah, that's the guy. Everyone he's, says that. He's great. Well, thank you for saying he looks like me instead of saying I look like him. Yeah. He's great goal for Docs too. Huh? What if it turns out he's your long lost brother? Oh, I guess I'll look like him because he's 44 years old. Dang. Mm -hmm. I never knew he was older than me. Are you 20 years old? I'm 36. Oh, you look 20. You're the same age as Mark. So you're a year uh, older than me. Uh -oh. all right uh gangster i'm gonna logan i'm gonna close this down and god bless